Who's going to bowl for England? Looks like uh, Ollie Stone's going to have a go. Bowled, uh, bowled well this morning. And uh, he got one wicket. Should have had another. Bracey uh, dropped the catch three balls later. But this really is a crucial session now. The lead 23. The five wickets in hand. But as we've uh, mentioned, it is, it's a longer tail New Zealand have here than we're on duty at Lord's. So uh, if England get another couple of wickets, then... Uh, it could, uh, it could make inroads quickly. Stone bowls the first ball. It's outside the off stump. Blundell lets it go through. It's taken by Bracey. Alistair Cook is uh, alongside me. And very quickly, Alistair Mitchell's coming in here. Yeah, another fantastic lunch here, Edge. a nice chilli con carne, but England will be desperate for another couple of wickets. What keeps them, keeps them really happy in one way is that Wagner's in next and Henry. Now, Wagner's batting at 10 or even 11 last week, and he's in at 8, so... There is a glimmer of hope, but a slightly longer tail. Afternoon, Alistair. Here is Stone in full to Blundell, and he's chipping it into the onside, finds a fielder, and there's no run. Now, Wagner was the night watchman, wasn't he, at Lord's? And he survived a little while and scored some pretty important runs. He's not shy of swinging the bat, so it could result in some quick runs, but also could bring his downfall. He'll certainly have a go. Well, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's worked his batting a lot, actually. Yeah. Didn't he, I guess, in 2000... I'm going to say 2018, when they had to bat for a draw, he was not out it, it worked against us away, and he blocked for about an hour and a half, I reckon. Stone in, again, getting in behind it is Blundell to a ball of foolish length on Millen off, back up the pitch and no run. So he can, he can, he can bat, actually. He can yeah, bat. he's Matt, very, quite accomplished. Yeah, and Matt Henry can hold about as well. And maybe not quite a Trent Bolt, maybe not quite so. So there is there is hope, though, for England. Uh, I think if we can keep that lead... Lead below 70 or 80. Mm. Yeah, that's what England's aim would be, I reckon. I mean, if they score, I mean, if they go through the session, that lead could well be up towards that mark. Clipped into the onside. Pick up and throw at the stumps as they scamper a single. Bracey's over the stumps, doesn't gather it cleanly, but safely through. 3 2 7 for 5. Yeah, as, they bat, as they bat the session, the lead will be over 100, wouldn't it? And I England reckon. are in a bit of trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's hard then, isn't it? They're going um, to fight back. From from there, not not impossible um, at all. I, I, the one thing for England, I, this wicket does stay good. You know, it's not a historically doesn't deteriorate massively, so it hasn't done over the last few years. So there's no, certainly no demons in in this wicket to bat against. A bit of rough for the Patel to bowl into, um, but there's nowhere near as much swing as uh, New Zealand found in their first inning. So it's something less for England to cope with. The sun has popped behind one of these fluffy white clouds as Stone is in to Mitchell inside half of the bat. He's taking a quick single to mid-wicket. The pick up and the throw comes into Bracey. And Stone has his hands on his head because it, it wasn't cleanly off the full face of the bat. It scampered through nonetheless and every run inches up the lead. 25 it now stands at. Plenty of uh, blue sky up above now. Probably the clearest the sky's been, actually, since the start of the match. It's often been a, a blanket of grey, but the sun's dipping in and out. Lots of pale shirts and short sleeves uh, around the ground here. Quite a few empty seats suggest people still milling around after lunch, making their way back as Stone is in again and comes back in at Blundell. He defends into the onside and no run. 3-2-8 for five. It completes the first over after the lunch break and this morning it was Stone and Wood who were the two wicket takers and Blundell offered that chance to Bracey when he was on naught and wasn't able to hang on it was a torrid morning for Bracey uh, until he then took that catch to dismiss Nichols and made him feel a little bit better Andy uh, Alison we've had a, a number of queries on Twitter about mm -hmm. the number of batsmen who got into the 80s in this test we've had five batsmen uh, reach 80 four of them have been out Without reaching 83, Dan Lawrence left strand at 81, not out. I've been asked whether this is a record for a test match. Five players <laughs> in the 80s. Have you been asked, or is this you asking it? I have proof. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes Andy just likes to set himself yeah, that's you know, what I complicated tasks. I have a number of Twitter accounts that I send myself requests with. Um, you see, this five players in the 80s equals the record for any test match. Uh, England, Australia at Old Trafford in 1968. There were five scores in the 80s. And uh, Australia, South Africa at the SCG, January 1964. Also five in the 80s. So this has tied the record. Already. 
tantalisingly poised for we'll a moment back, of history. Come back to that. It's a change of ends here. Anderson from the pavilion end. Looking to try and find a little bit of swing to Mitchell. He comes forward. Angles into the offside. So we're equal with the record now at five. So how excited would you be? <laughs> I mean, from an England perspective, not very. But it might be an England batsman who gets into the 80s later on. Yeah, you yeah. Take, you take 80. Break a record. Well, I'd hope to see, you know, if... Uh, one of these two New Zealanders reaches 80, a yeah. declaration, just to make sure that the record is, is yeah. secured. So is that 80 and not going on to get 100, or is that... That's just being, scores in the 80s. Okay. Being out in the 80s, or, or not out in the 80s. Anderson, and again, Sir Mitchell's coming forward. Full of foolish length again on off stump, no run. What's the record then for the most amount of 50s in a game without 100? Just 50s or 80s? Well, let's just say half centuries okay. between... 50 and 99 without 100. Oh, I see. So any, any yeah, not, not being out not in just, the 50s. Not, no. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, when okay, you... Without a batsman your... going on. You've got to start. Batsmen have all got starts without yeah, going without on. Yeah, without getting 100. Anderson running into slips for Mitchell. Oh, a touch of shape, perhaps. Comes forward, swings that back leg round. Ball runs up to mid on, where it's fielded by Wood. And no run. A bit more movement, isn't it, from from Mitchell and his, his stance. A lot of the New Zealanders have small triggers, very simple technique. He's a, he's a bit more frenetic, more movement. Defended nice and straight. It's always a good sign if you're defending straight. Taps his bat a bit against the ground and then crouches quite low in his stance. Sanderson's in once more, a little bit in shape, and then he's standing up and working it into the onside. Crawley moves into field. Have you found something already? Already. 13. 13. 13. In the whole of history? Without a century. But in the game. Okay. In the single test, South Africa against England, Durban, in January 1928. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to think when you said Durban, I'm going, like, recent tours, recent tours, no. 13. Ah. You have to name all those 13 in a minute, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Anderson at the end of his mark. The word to Stuart Broad. It's before bowling this delivery. In he comes. Bound at the crease. Bowling in again. Forward comes Mitchell. Angle into that offside. Yeah, he just kind of triggers with his body. Actually, there he stepped out the crease trying to negate uh, Jimmy's movement. Just to say, he's a little bit more frenetic than the other New Zealand batsmen have been. I just wandered down the pitch and had a little word to Mitchell just then. Would have been about advancing too far. I think it might have been the step after, you know, the step after saying no, but also because of his moving down would have been straight mm. on the danger zone. They're a protector of the wicket, aren't they, the umpires? Last ball of the over outside the off stump. Angle of the bat, he's got it past Gully. Burns is chasing back. It's along the ground, down towards the third man boundary. Sliding stop. Mitchell coming back for the second as the ball is returned to the gloves of Bracey. A couple of runs off the over. 330 for five, and, and the lead is 27. Interesting just talking about the yeah, the balance of the England size. We're heading towards the end of the, the interval then. And, of course, no Ben Stokes who provides such such a balance, uh, but missing because of the broken finger, isn't it? He had to leave the, the IPL early, but, um, yeah, broken left index finger and, of course, injury to Joffre Archer as well, elbow surgery for him. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, certainly Butler, Wokes and Curran are the three rested from the IPL, aren't they, having returned yeah. and done the isolation. Well, you know Stokes' his claw in his right hand, you know, that one he broke quite nasty and then let the operation got quite quite so well. He did exactly the same injury on his left index finger, so his, his hands are all over the place. Here's Stone. Sun out again and Blundell is defending solidly forward, getting well over the ball, back up the pitch into the hands of the bowler. Do you really want the full list of all the 13 <laughs> half centuries in the <laughs> You've got them. Durban test of I'm going to give us some evocative names. Uh, Nummy Dean, the South Africa captain, made 77. Uh, uh, Stump by Roni Staniforth off the bowling of Warwickshire legend Bob Wyatt. There's a few good names there for you. you. Go. Buster Newpen, <laughs> born in Norway. So I knew there'd be good value to the names. Stone in, angling into Blundell, the midwicket region. Crawley's there to field. Uh, he made 51, batting at number nine, famous, uh, famously good on mat the old matting wickets they used to play on as a, as a bowler. Then for England, uh, uh, Percy Holmes made 70, Ernest Tildesley 78, Wally Hammond, one of England's all-time mm. greats, 90, although I hope we repeat the stat from the other day. In his first 25 home tests, he averaged less with the bat than Stuart Broad did in his first 25 home tests. Hope um, for everyone. <laughs> 
his stone. In past the umpires, long arms Ooh. of his down the leg side, little clip from the batsman. And Blundell, it's leg by, he's come off the thigh pad, I fancy, but four down to the fence beneath us. All helps the New Zealand lead. 31 it moves to, 3.34 for five. But looking to, well, maybe straying down the leg side. There's a deep backwards square. Stuart Broad is down here as some protection on that fine leg boundary if there's a, a short ball and a pull or a hook is attempted. Two slips go down. And Stone bounds in off the hip this time, nudged away by Blundell. Brings deep square leg in off the fence. Is that Lawrence down there. Throw comes back into Bracey. One more for New Zealand. And you've got more names. <laughs> so that <laughs> concludes the first inning. South Africa 246, <laughs> England 430. South Africa then a mighty third innings with half centuries from uh, one of their early greats, H.W. Um, uh, Taylor, Nicholson, Catterall, and then Dean and Newpen again, both uh, both made uh, half centuries in England. In goes Stone, short ball taken on straight to mid-wickets. And that is held by Zach Crawley. It was hit hard but right into the midriff. And it's another wicket for Ollie Stone in this innings. And Mitchell is on his way for six. 335, now for six. Yeah, Mitchell walking off, slamming his bat against the ground and pad. It was a, it was a short ball. England have had a 5-4 field, so they've got four men on the leg side. So Ollie Stone straight down the leg side, got clipped off his... Uh, for four leg buys, he's bowled a short one and he's just, he's hit it pretty well actually hit it pretty well straight at mid-wicket right into the mid-drift of Zach Crawley took a good catch that came flat and hard but yeah, again, what we're talking about, England just desperate to get Wagner in that's what they'll be saying, get Wagner in and it opens up an end you know, he's better than that but they the keep just chipping away at this wicket that wicket England got Ross Taylor, first over after the drinks break, when Joe Root gave his side, he doesn't give many tellings off, but he was, it looked like a teacher telling off the lad, saying what that what they delivered in the first hour wasn't good enough. He fired the lads up, and Ollie Stone got Ross Taylor out straight away. And you know, if they hadn't got that wicket that in New Zealand thought of getting a big lead, and actually just chipping away the last hour and, hour and 10 minutes, they only lead by 32 with four wickets left. England's still in this game. I'd love to go bang bang again, wouldn't they? Yeah, very timely wickets and Stone. You're right, he removed Taylor in his first over of the day when he was given the opportunity. Bracy with a catch, then Bracy with a catch to dismiss Henry Nichols off Wood for 21. Just before that, Bracy had dropped Blundell. How much more advanced could England be if his wicket had fallen? He's he's a major obstacle, really. But if they can target these new batsmen coming in, that'll be the end that opens up. So Wagner on strike. Uh, and this is when Joe Root has the luxury now of two quick bowlers. This is when it really makes a big difference. Obviously, top order players, they don't particularly like the extra pace, but they've got the techniques to handle it. But it's like a really good spinner or a really quick bowler bowling at the tail makes a really big difference. So it'll be definitely Mark Wood will come on at some stage. Stone to Wagner. Oh, the ball's ballooning up into the onside. It's dropped safely, but it so easily could have been out. Crawley... Fielding in that region, didn't carry far enough to him. He tried to move forward. But listen to this Edgebaston crowd. They're getting behind Ollie Stone, of course, is a Warwickshire player. They're applauding him for a wicket taking over. But that was a, it was a good bouncer that reared on Wagner. He couldn't control it, couldn't keep it down. I looped over, probably would have looped actually over short leg. But I say it's going to be unrelenting now for the for New Zealand tail. You'd imagine. James Anderson, Stuart Broad will plug up one end and try and keep the the run rate down. You know, be a bowl tight, and bowl their traditional line length, and then he can go stone, wood, stone, wood. So I think the lower order of New Zealand are going to get a bit of a barrage. When he came out in the first innings at Lord's Wagner, put on a, a merry last wicket stand of 40 along with Devon Conway. He scored at 25 off 21. But yeah, coming up much higher here. Crowd behind Anderson, and he's now to Blundell, straying onto leg stump and clipped around the corner along the ground, finds fine leg, throw comes in, and Blundell's taken a single. So Anderson gets his chance to bowl to Wagner. Yeah, he won't mind that too much, just drifted down to get him one. But this is quite interesting, isn't it? Because will Wagner play 
like a responsible number eight because he's gone up the order. Feels like he has to bat more responsibly. Or will he play his shots like he does number 11 when you get a, get a licence? So, um. What of uh, Wagner's position in the order, Andy, sort of in terms of how often he would have you know, batted up and even as high as eight? Well, other than as night watchman, yeah. this is the highest he's batted for New Zealand. He has batted 9, 10 and 11 through his career, not so often at 11. OK, well, there's a job to be done. The lead is 33. Anderson around the wicket to the left-handed. Wagner's been the ball full. And he's defending into the pitch, and Anderson stretches a left hand out to grab the ball in his follow-through. Uh, as we mentioned at Lords, and we were talking about that defensive innings he played in Christchurch, that was seven off 103 balls as it, uh, New Zealand blocked out uh, to defy England in the second test of that series to secure a 1-0 uh, victory. But more recently, 66 not out of 42 balls against West Indies. So if we saw at Lords, he can hit the ball cleanly. Yeah, I think he enjoys the, the idea of counter-attack. Anderson in, oh, ball bowled him, stumped demolished, and a fist bump from James Anderson picks up his first wicket of the match in his 162nd test. And the crowd loving it, their arms are aloft. Signs for Jimmy Anderson are being held aloft in the crowd as well. Wagner on his way without scoring. The whole crowd standing up. Fantastic moment. <coughs> Sorry. Hitting the top of the off stump. I mean, a beautiful delivery classic. Anderson, in many ways. You're right there, Alistair. No, Overcome not. by the emotion. <laughs> no, certainly not emotion. <laughs> I don't know about that chilli I was talking about. Just come, come back up. But yeah, top of off stump. Perfect ball for, for the tail. Not the tail, but a lot of straight away. You bowl, bowl there, you're in danger. England right back in this game. Crowd flying. What an atmosphere. Mm. What an atmosphere. It's like they've been waiting all day. They had the chance to cheer Anderson onto the field. They've been waiting for a moment when he took a wicket. And they're all on their feet in the Holly stand. And from the team perspective, this is what England needed. Quick wickets after lunch. And they've grabbed two of them already. So four for 44 since Joe Root's pep talk <laughs> uh, in the drinks break this morning. Plus that uh, drop catch of uh, Blundell who's gone on to 27. Yeah, it's not been too costly just yet, Blundell, but said they've got now the tail uh, chance well in amongst the bowlers. And Matt Henry now coming out. I don't believe that uh, Ajaz Patel has a, a tremendous first-class record. Uh, and Trent Bolt is coming at number 11. So It was a tough catch, though, that keeper's catch. He should have caught it. Well, it, like you expect an international level uh, keeper to catch it, but it was low, quick to his right. So watch his first ball to Henry. It's Anderson in. He's honing it off, off stump again. But Henry is there to defend. Working out to Lawrence in the covers. No run. It wasn't like a, a banker was. It wasn't one of those mid drift one. It was low to his right. Yeah, it had to w dive. Yeah, it would have carried to Joe. The only thing that was a bit strange was Joe Root was diving to his left as well which is unusual, I stand a lot at first slip. Mm. And you don't really want to catch much on your left-hand side. Uh, you know, you just kind of get so... And to keep, as we see the keeper diving, he's also so rooty diving if he was going to catch it. So they're quite wide. Anderson in. Bowling outside off stump. Forward comes Henry to Lawrence in the covers once more. Henry jogs away to the square leg and bounces up and down on his toes, a bit like a boxer. He enjoyed that wicket, didn't Jimmy? Didn't he? You could see a bit of frustration <laughs> in his 24 overs so far, and probably just because of what's happened in the game. You know, becoming the leading uh, test, you know, most caps. Mm. This the off-field distraction is not helpful in one sense. You just you still want to contribute in the game. Anderson into Henry honing it on middle. He's appealing for leg before. All dropped into the onside, and now looking towards Joe Root. They, re they will review it. They will review oh, it. He's from over the wicket to the right-hander. Gone for it. Yes, I, they have. I think it's leg side in a little bit high. But Bracey, Bracey hadn't moved at all. He was still in line, so it's always a bit of an indication for the umpire. But I, I think it might just be sliding on the leg stump. The voice of Michael Goff, the third umpire. Ooh. Is there any... That involved, that might be the first thing to look at. He was looking to nudge to leg. It's close, actually. Up on his toes as well, isn't he? The ball, when it has struck the pad, is just above the knee roll. He's quite... He's on the crease. 
You, can, you can't see middle, so his pads are in line with with middle. He's hit him just on the inside or outside of his pads, so he's probably hitting middle on the legs, just how much further it's got to travel. It's, it's close. You can see why it's given not out. I think it's like in, it, in full time, you can see why it's given. Yeah, that's why as well. Bit of inside edge. Yeah, clear enough to see with the bat well in front of pad. So easy to match the Snicko line. I'll let you know you're on screen. You're on screen now. There we go. The voice of Michael Goff, clear spike. So Anderson content with the one wicket so far. It means England have lost one of their three reviews. But, yeah, you're absolutely right with, with Anderson. He will you know, come in today. You're, you're lauded for your career when you reach such a landmark as this but he wants to absolutely be I'm, I'm still the main man now which of course he is but he wants that I to be yeah. shown in the wickets column I don't think it's about being the main man I just think you just they just want you, to perform you want to perform you want to do well you want to, it's obviously an incredible achievement but you, you don't want to just be remembered for that for that for this game you want to have added something to the team and yeah. delivered like he always does so I think just I think he'd just be relieved actually that he's got one and he'd probably get a hat for now Blundell is on 27 and facing up. Stone over the wicket and on off stump. He's getting behind it. Blundell, that was almost a Steve Smith-esque kind of leave after he'd played the ball. A swish of the bat horizontally across his body. In that dramatic fashion. 3-3-6 three, three, for 7. 33 runs is the lead. But three more wickets now and England can set about batting. And it's a, a very... A very gettable lead to make up and then start to build their own lead. But there is work to do yet. Stone in, in bright sunshine. Bowling full again to Blundell. Jabbing that bat down, knocking it into the onside. Crawley is there. Interesting for the captain now because you just want to bowl. You really want to bowl at Matt Henry. You want to bowl as many balls as you can, especially Ollie Stone at this pace. But you kind of balance your act. Do you just give Tom Blundell the easy single? Do you just give him an easy single? Do you put midwick out as well so you can bowl the old bouncer? You'll just get the one, then you get you know more balls than Matt Henry, but it almost feels as if then you're giving New Zealand just easy runs. Yeah, because how long might that go exactly. on for? Exactly, so yeah, I think he's doing the right thing, but they'll be in the back of his mind thinking, God, give him, let, let Ollie Stone go at Matt Henry. Yeah, see how he deals with the pace. Yeah. Two wickets for Stone so far in this innings. Again, bowling full, bat and pad. At the time, it brought a bit of an anguished cry from behind the stumps and from the bowler himself as he walks back to his mark got Bracey there in his white wide brimmed sun hat on Wood sports that as well and Stuart Broad three sun hats on the field now and aiming bowling at the stumps and Stone some of the crowd still on their feet in the holly stand I think some people over there don't sit down all day <laughs> why would you <laughs> Stone in again Keeps that right arm quite close to his hip as he runs in. Shot. Oh, that's a lovely drive through the covers. Four runs all the way. Right in the slots for Blundell. Takes the lead up to 37. Long chase back for Mark Wood to pick up. 340 for seven, New Zealand. A lovely shot. Absolutely perf perfectly timed. You wait for it again. Another... As a trait of these New Zealand batsmen really do let the ball come. So they said to tie the ball really nice. It's a lovely, lovely drive. Couldn't play it any better. Classical looking. Stone, blonde haired in. Short ball. It's been hooked around the corner down to fine leg where Broad is there. He kneels to field, drops to one knee. Sends the ball back into Bracey. It's almost what he's looking for him to go after that shot with the deep backwards square there and Broad. But if he's able to get on top of it and keep it down, then. It won't, uh, won't be an issue. Short leg? Do you think that short leg in for Matt Henry? Don't really need mm, the extra cover. If he fends cover. it. Yeah, do you need the extra cover if he gets a single? Jimmy gets to bowl at him. Andy, have you got something? Wait for this delivery from Stone. It's the last ball of the over. Daniel Norcross is then coming in. Stone from a little wide of the crease. Pull just wide this time of short mid wicket and it's sure. Crawley again. It's gone for four. Again, hit firmly. That's a good shot. That's a very good shot. I was not expecting that from Henry. He's pulled it. Pulled Ollie Stone. He's bowling quickly in this spell. Long way in front of square. 
Again, that New Zealand lead stretches. 3.45 for seven. Andy Zaltzman's going to come in with a few words. Alistair, see you in a moment. Daniel Norcross is coming in here. I was just about to tell you how Matt, Matt Henry likes to hit the ball hard. He has a very uh, high batting scoring rate in his uh, both test and first class career. Not played a great deal of test cricket. 244 runs, average 18, but a strike rate of 76 in first class cricket. He has five half centuries on average, just under 20. He made 66 against Australia in a test match of uh, 93 balls uh, back in February 2016. Daniel. Thank you, Andy. Jimmy Anderson's about to start a new over. First ball of it, he's got two slips in. And the first ball is defended on the front foot by Blundell, who has 31. New Zealand, 3.45 for seven. Alistair Cook. I will come to you in a moment. You're, 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 in the, you're, you're being ministered to by somebody else. But um, this game, England refuse to give up in it. I mean, I think give up. They were never going to give up. But there have been moments in this game when it looked like New Zealand were on the brink of running away with it. And just... Each time they have, England have got a wicket. They've found a way. 3.45 for seven. Anderson in. Bundle defends into the offside. Picked up in the covers. What we, well, I don't know what we know about Ajaz Patel. I've asked Craig McMillan how he bats. Wasn't a very favourable report. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear the same conversation as well. So, uh, But Trent, Trent Bolt can be annoying. Oh, he certainly can. Because he's one of those guys who, if you bowl in the channel, he misses, plays and misses everything. So he's, well, he's going to miss yeah. the straight one. He hits every single straight one. So That's annoying, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Why would you have that facility? <laughs> it's, it's, it seems unnecessarily irksome. Full and uh, defended by Blundell. Back up the wicket. Did you hear... Um, up his own body. Did you hear the lunchtime chat with Toby Tarrant? Yes, I'm, I'm aware of Toby's work. I didn't hear all of what he said because I was trying to wolf down some food between yeah. stints. Oh, well, are you a fan of him? Very much so, yes, I have to say that. Well, yes. he, he just started calling. He didn't think you had long left. as a. He he had long up. left? And he was saying, it, if it's already Norcross hasn't got a long left, I'll step into his shoes. Oh, he? he's, oh, that's what he was doing here, wasn't it? Anderson in, forward in defence, comes Brundle, back up the wicket, no run. I mean, look, I think he'd make an OK summariser. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think he's ready for ball okay. by ball. <laughs> he seemed to think he was, and he was eyeing up your... Well, he's a confident young man. He was wearing one of my shirts, by the looks of it, when he came in. Yeah, you're very... Very I got muted today. Yeah, very muted. I'm just following the rubric. It's just what Catherine told me to wear. Is Anderson is in, a bit shorter, pushed back up the wicket. There's no run. I was right. It's because someone in the crowd was wearing exactly the same shirt as you <laughs> yesterday. That was a bit spooky, wasn't it? He was falling asleep at the time. <laughs> he doesn't remember wearing the same shirt as you. But it was exactly the same one, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think they're mass-produced by a relatively cheap clothing okay. outlet, of which there are many branches. <laughs> We had many branches on your shirt. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Toby's actually a pretty... He's a decent enough cricketer. I, I hope he talked about um, his exploits with Stoke Dabernon in the Surrey Championship. Anderson is in. For, well, back of a length, really, and again defended back up the wicket. A maiden over. And that was Blundell on strike throughout. Didn't show any kind of proactivity there, did he? It wasn't as if he's thinking, uh-oh, Henry's at the other end. He's just played out a maiden. It's a good probing over from Anderson. 3.45 for seven. Score remains. Blundell, 32. Henry has four. What do you make of you know England's performance? There have been times when it felt a bit stodgy. Um, they weren't being able to get the ball really to move in the same way that Bolton, Wagner and Henry had done. But... They still in it, aren't they? Very yeah, much in the they've game. They've been very dogged, haven't they? And actually dogged. have made it harder for themselves with the drop catches. You know, they've had to probably... Was that four drop catches they've had? So they yes. Three, sorry. I was... Stone in. And Henry drives elegantly. Beautifully. Yes, that's, that's, that's the source of our amusement. It was an elegant off drive, but it goes straight to wood. And then just off. stands nonchalantly at the, there with his legs crossed, as all batters do when they've hit a good shot. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, Henry can bat, can't well, he? Yeah, I've seen, I, him, seen him with the bat a bit. I didn't realise it was quite as dangerous as it could be, so I think England won't mind him playing shots, but half an hour of him. Stone in again. Henry defends off the back foot with no foot movement. He's standing... It's common vogue at the moment. He's standing on sort of off stump. Have you... Is this happening at Essex as well? A batter sort of moving across their stumps? A little bit, yeah. I, I, I think the, the the trigger movement of going back and across has, go, has gone out of the game. Right. So 
if if you go back and across like I do, you end up getting in a pretty similar situation as position as the guys kind of end up in, but they're just doing it from a standstill start. Stone in, and that's worked into the onside of the front foot, but uh, won't beat the fielder Anderson at mid on. Yeah, I, I heard Mark Butcher talking about, you know, his he didn't like it at all, but actually he went back and across a long way mm. to off stump, didn't he? So with yeah. his back foot, I know his front foot wasn't crop. And that's there. to keep momentum into well, the ball. I, no, I like the trigger because it moves people. It gives you something. It gets you. It gets you going. You need something to get you going. When the ball's bowling, like Ollie Stone here, 85. Very hard to stand still. When Matt Henry is standing pretty much dead still and just trying to react. He is. Stone's into him slightly wide of the crease. This time, clattered through the offside for four through backward point. That is a wonderful shot. It wasn't a half volley by any means, and he's driven it pretty much off the back foot from the crease. Don't. Through backward point for four, 349 for seven. Look, who, look at that. Who needs a trigger when you can just stand and look carve it to the offside? Very Phil Tufnell esque. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Phil Tufnell, I almost felt like that was a planned segue from the night. Sir Chef, as um, Phil Tufnell prepares to join us. 349 for seven, the lead for New Zealand now, 46. England having picked up four wickets today, a couple since lunch. Stone is in to Henry, he's got two slips, again wide of the crease, driven firmly, back past the bowler, good diving stop by Broad, prevents a run, uh, what well, Wood I should say, prevents a run at mid-off. The score remains 3.9 for 7. Are you with us now, Philip? That bloke, I've always wasted <laughs> Who, Henry? Yeah, no. Uh, Alice, Alice Kirk. Yes, yes. yes. Well, he, very tough and esque Yes, he, he can spot a fine He's classical batter. He's a good batter. judge. Good he, judge isn't of the bats. He's a very good judge of bats. We saw a marvellous way. You had a very eccentric way of, of um, leaving the relatively straight short ball. We saw it in <laughs> the match at Lords against New Zealand that yeah. was being shown on the telly during a rain break. Stone in. Henry drives, Ooh. edges, over second slip, down to the boundary for four. Yeah. It was significantly over the top of Sibley, no chance offered, but it was a flashing drive, and it indicates that Henry's here to be Correct. aggressive, yeah. which it, we like to see. Yes, but England need to be careful, don't they? What's the lead? 30 or 40? 50 now, 353 yeah, exactly. for 7 at the yeah. end of the over. And it could just run away with you quickly. Uh, Blundell sort of dropped anchor and playing, playing very nicely, but um, the quick 20 minutes of Henry... And well, and uh, Bolt. I mean, Bolt, Bolt yeah. likes to hit a six, doesn't he, Andy? Have you got... Um, not many, I isn't, don't he, isn't he one of those who uh, scores a lot of his runs in sixes? No, he's not. Is he? Is. What, Trent Bolt? Trent Bolt. Blimey. Yes, he's a, he's a clear-the-front-leg man and okay. whacked the ball into the stands, I believe. But they've, they've, they've dragged themselves back into it, haven't they? they have. As you say, those three or four quick wickets. Uh, just a lead of 50. Still in it. But... It could be taken away from them sharpish. Anderson into Blundell, down the leg side. A flick at it and a miss. Bracey takes it, moving away to his left. Bracey's donned the sun hat. Yeah. Like another Gloucestershire keeper. Jack Dane Russ. Gone by, Dane yes. Gone by. But he'd cut the uh, brim. He, the brim was yes. cut. You see, and shortened, because when he goes down in his wicket-keeping stance, the brim used to oh, hit was the back why? of the neck. Like yeah. Yes, it I used see. to annoy him. It was sort of like Trigger's broom in the end, wasn't it, that, that hat? Because it was sort of... It wasn't the same hat that it started with, although it was. It just kept on bits... Is that, is that similar? Is Trigger's broom similar to Schroeder's cat? <laughs> Are you, on it? you at it again? And <laughs> ball, ball, played it to the odd side. There's no run. Remember in Only Fools and Balls? Oh, Trigger's broom. Oh, Trigger's right, broom. Okay. I thought it Which was another... has so many repairs. Quantum physics, physics thing, sorry, yes. No, I... I God, I did the quantum physics lesson yesterday. Yes, it was tricky. It's, it's light entertainment from the late 20th century today. <laughs> Two sides of the same coin. Yeah. <laughs> well, we aim to mix it up. Yes. 353 for seven. Blundell on strike. Two slips. Backward point. Extra mid off, mid on, mid wicket. And Sinin on the pads. Worked into the onside. Fielded by Crawley. They won't get a run. He's got good blundle, isn't he? He has really. Well, it's just like a just a ready-made. It's a replacement for Watling. He's, he's perfect, isn't he? I mean, he even looks like him. Yes. They've sort of cloned him. And this is. I'm not having a go at Bracey here. He's young and he's starting his career. But England have picked a number three batter to come in at number seven and keep wicket, whereas New Zealand have seemed to have found a like-for-like -like yeah. replacement with Watling. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Blundell. Anderson in forward in watchful defence, pushed to the offside. To no Sol just solid, isn't he? Yeah, nothing's getting past him at the moment. No, no, and he, he knows 
what he's about as well. He looks like he's got a good cricketing brain. Yes. Well, they yes. all do the new season, yes, don't do. they? Yes, you sort of see our not being, you know, not having a go or anything like that. But you see our sort of young cricketers come in and they all look a bit edgy and, you know, a few little wafts outside the off stump. And a New Zealander young cricketer comes and he just looks solid. It's like they've been to a u cricket university. Yes. With cricketing mortar boards. Anderson in, worked into the onside. Yeah. Fielded again by Crawley, there's no run. Where they're sort of, they have exams every every four yeah. weeks, and, you know, some yeah. specialist subject. Yeah, the leave. The, <laughs> Your 50 runs ahead with three wickets in hand <laughs> yes. on day three. How Discuss. do you go about it? Discuss. You know? Yes, 3,000 words on that, please, Mr. Blundell. Yeah, I agree. They just look solid, don't they? They do. They look like they don't know what they're about. But perhaps sometimes our guys just look a bit, a bit anxious. Yeah, I mean, more experience, I suppose, in the New Zealand side as well, we've got well, to be mindful well, of. Yeah. Anson in. Blundell defends wow. so solidly. Nothing is getting past no. him. Um, a tidy over from Anderson, but one that yielded no reward. 3.53 for 7, Henry 12, Blundell 32, Andy Zaltzman. It's the fifth consecutive test match in which England have conceded a first innings deficit. Oh. Two this summer and the last three of the uh, India series. After they had that big win in the, in the first test. This is the most consecutive games England have had a first innings deficit since the 20, 2013 when uh, the last three tests of the home ashes that year and the first three tests in Australia, uh, England trailed. Before that, you've got to go back to 2002-03. And uh, tough as you might be able to tell us about this, 1998-99, 16 tests in a row, England were behind Ooh. on first innings. 16? Feels about right. <laughs> How many of them was, was Paul Phil playing? <laughs> so it's not your fault, is it? Not really. You're not the batter. Not really. Give me some of the bowl, that lads. But England have yes. had a lot, quite a few good victories yeah. from uh, from deficits in uh, in recent years. Yes, that's well against it. Pakistan. Oh, sorry, against Pakistan last year. <laughs> I'm knocking down the scenery. <laughs> um, that was a thrilling game, wasn't it? Right. They conceded quite a sizeable deficit. Wood has replaced Stone. He's running in from the city end to Matt Henry. Henry drives elegantly into the ground. It's picked up in the covers by Pope. There's no run. Yes, that was a deficit of well over 100, wasn't yep, it? Yeah. And then they bowled Pakistan out cheaply. Well, Pakistan didn't play that no. second innings awfully wisely, no, did they? No, no. I remember Andy was almost enraged by the way they played it. That was a that was a fabulous test, wasn't it? It was. It was brilliant. Not a soul there, which was a shame because... Yes, it, it was a was, brilliant test. Yeah, we it? were very lucky to see Josh that. Josh Butler, Chris yeah, Wokes. Yeah, Chris Wokes knocking it off as well. Two players that are not available. No. For selection. They'll be back. They'll be back. Wood in bright sunshine runs towards us. And Henry defends from the crease back to the bowler. Yes, you were quite... You, you were frequently enraged last summer, actually, Andy. Furious he was at he times. He was. Oh, well, livid, livid, livid. livid. <laughs> I think I was tr trying to make up for the level of enragement that a full crowd would have had. <laughs> some, yes. of the, some of the, you know, the Pakistan contingent. It, been it's, I think the wildest I saw him was about the light at Southampton. Oh, oh. he was incandescent. Oh, which was ironic, really, because we could have done with a bit of incandescence just to, to lighten up the... If only just calmed down in that game at Old Trafford, England were 107 behind after the first innings. Pakistan then all out for 169 and England yeah. 277 for seven to win by three yeah. wins. It's great off that was. Wood hurtles in and Henry defends off the back foot from the crease really into the onside and it's uh, fielded comfortably enough 353 for seven the score remains yes that, that got his goat yes Pakistan's second innings got his goat yeah a few things yeah I mean you and I were just, just a, a measure of moderation and sunny disposition weren't we <laughs> and you just had to cope with the clattering fury of Zaltzman marching back and forth <laughs> Highlighters throwing Banging everywhere. his fist. Highlighter pens, yes. <laughs> Highlighter pens, clipboards. <laughs> it's a whirly gig of anger. Here comes Wood. Charging in. And Henry is up for the bad. Really close given. Up goes the finger. That looked plum. If he's not got any bat on it, and I suspect he hasn't because he hasn't gone straight for the referral, and... Blundell's turned his back, <laughs> which is not, not, it's not the most... It's a sign. <laughs> it's the most collegiate thing for your partner to do, and he's walking off. He's yeah. walking off, so New Zealand have definitely lost their eighth wicket. Wood has got his man. Plum LBW. Henry's got to go for 12. 3.53 for seven. Um, Phil, why don't you describe all yeah. that? I'll get out of the way for Ishiguha. Well, it's pretty easy to describe that one. That is absolutely stone dead. Uh, almost a half volley which 
Uh, Henry's trying to clip through the leg side, but it was uprooting middle stump, that one. He's got to go for 12. Handy little, handy little 12, though. He's just got New Zealand to a lead of 50, but uh, well done, Mark Wood. Uh, England will really want to finish these last two off because I can just feel that they're going to be positive now. Quick 30 or 40 from someone will really hurt England. Eesh, Hi, afternoon. how are you? Good Very afternoon, well. yes. England clawing their way back into this, aren't they? Yes. Are you well? 50. I'm good. good. I only saw you two seconds ago. I know. On the television. Well, no, but they don't know this, do they? Yeah, you that's know. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, I haven't seen you all week. Great. They just don't know. Great to see you again. <laughs> yes, lovely to see you too. Uh, for your information, the highlights will be on BBC Two at 7 o'clock tonight. Yes, they will. Here come the crowd. Yep. Getting behind England here is Wood. He's on the charge. James Bracey has uh, replaced his blue England cap with a white brimmed hat. I don't know whether it's a good look, is it? Keeper it's very in a brim. Jack Russell, isn't it? Is it a good look? That, that looks a lot newer than. Yeah. Yeah, Jack, Jack. was really <laughs> like a bit dogger tuned. Yes, it had. Uh, they're going to put a leg slip in place for Ajaz Patel, who is now out in the middle. The left hander, two slips in position. There's a massive gap on the offside. Maury Burns at point, but then no one else until James Anderson at a widish mid off. There's a mid on, short leg. And the man just going into just in front of square. Here comes Mark Wood. Patel gets back into his crease, almost moves back towards the leg side as that comes through, raising his bat. It's almost a used to play it, Phil, well, just backing it, away. I think it was a little bit more composed than me, really? actually. I think that was quite a good leave. Okay. Yeah, he seemed quite... Uh, didn't seem too flustered, did he? Let's see. There's definitely a tiny little shuffle back. Yes, uh, yes, perhaps apprehensive shuffle, an apprehensive... <laughs> backward step but uh, not surprised because he's steaming in Mark Wood back raised for Ajaz Patel back and across Oy. this time ducks underneath that one matrix style and back of a left delivery aimed at the body this time as that is the end of the over for Mark Wood 353 for 8 there New Zealand Patel yet to get off the Mark Blundell on 32 and a lead of 50 for the Black Caps yeah, that's manageable at the moment for England. They want to whip these last two out. That would be handy. But 50, it's handy lead. Well, the way England, well, yeah, the way England have been batting the, for the last year or two, they'll probably be two or three down. But uh, hopefully that won't be the case for England. The cheers for Mark Wood. Yeah, down yeah. on the fine leg boundary Popular in geezer. front of the scoreboard. Popular fella, and isn't he? Anderson will push away from the pavilion end. Two slips in position for Blundell. Crouching. Struck on the pad. Ooh. They turn Ooh. around. They appeal. Give a not out. Did it swing back? I think potentially going down the leg side. They don't review this one. No. England have two reviews left. Yeah, it was just whether it's swung enough. Obviously not. Yeah, yeah, hits him on the knee yeah. roll on the front pad. Yeah. Good let delivery on leg stump. Angle towards uh, the leg side as Anderson is through again on the back foot, punching this time to extra cover. No run for Blundell. It's right up on his toes as he plays that shot. It's looked composed, very still at the crease. Yeah. Gentle crouch. Very good. Bat hovering behind him as we see with so many batters these days, that kind of baseball style is... Broad tosses the ball to Anderson. Another natural-looking player, isn't he? I was just saying it to, to Dan when we were on commentary. Just just a perfect light-for-light -light replacement for BJ Watley. Anderson delivers on off stump as Bundle is back and across and playing that effortlessly to uh, mid-on. Cut off by Zach Crawley at mid-wicket to his left, no run. Oh, I don't know if this can be proved statistically, but what are you saying? Does New Zealand seem to have a higher proportion of dapper batsmen? <laughs> terms of just neat yes. organized players. Yes. Yeah. Watling, very dapper. Yeah. Yeah. They they like it, don't they? They like to be organized, not not twitchy. Good players they're churning out at the moment, New Zealand. Anderson bowls. Blundell flicks it away off the back foot and rotates the bat in his hand as he 
comes through for a single down to fine leg. Moves to 354 for eight. Patel on north and Blundell moves to 33. That's an interesting shot. Yeah, whippage. Yeah. First sort of bit of flamboyance we've seen from him, really, haven't we? He's seen a beautiful cover, beautiful cover drives and clips off the leg, but he might be thinking... There's a real flourish to it. Yeah, to himself that... Yeah, he needs to get on. Get Perhaps, on yes. Patel and Bolt. Perhaps. He's made a, his own decision. He's made his mind up. He might try and score another quick 20 or 30. But Patel hasn't done much with the bat in his brief test career, just 53 runs, average seven. But uh, in first-class cricket, recently got his first first-class half-century. Uh, he's played nearly, uh, he's played this is his 67th match, averaging 13. Low strike rates, so he's you know, more of a defensive tail ender than we saw with Henry. Anderson shuffles forwards past the umpire, around the wicket to the left-handed Ajaz Patel, mm, who's solid. defending the ball inside <laughs> the off-stump. It finds its way to Gully, no run. Mm. That was a good defensive shot, wasn't yeah, it? Was. right in line, head yeah. behind the ball. Nice stride out to Jimmy Anderson and back close to Pat. Yeah, that looked pretty good. This is what he's used to, though, James Anderson. Yes. Relatively full crowd here at Edgebaston. Holly Stand in full voice, the Barmy Army getting behind him. That's a huge watermelon in there. <laughs> As Anderson bowls onto oh. the stumps, Ajaz Patel turning it around the corner to backward square. Dan Lawrence chases oh. it towards uh, fine leg and uh, throws it in now as they pick up a single at the... End of the over, 355 for eight. Patel off the mark. He's on one and Blundell on 33, a lead of 52. Yeah, is that a watermelon? You see that green and red thing, is it? Oh, yeah. 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 Look, looks that's like a, that's with a pips. big... Oh, is it? Yeah, with pips, huge. yes. Well, that's a good bit of time to get through that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Warming up nicely, isn't it? The clouds have dispersed. There's a few little fluffy ones dotted about, but I think it's warming up and it's going to get even warmer tomorrow. Yeah, quite a few of the Kiwi batsmen uh, seeing it like watermelons yes. in this uh, test match. It's been a slow pitch, hasn't it? It's been interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. we thought best of the batting conditions today. Yeah, yeah. There's Wood. Oh, Ooh. short ball to Patel, who ducks underneath one. That was a hostile delivery through to Bracey. Yeah, if you want to hang around, you're going to have to face a few bit of chin music. Usually does for the tail enders. Let him know that you're about. That was well bowled, well directed. And from around the wicket, it just followed him. Didn't it? Never nice when it comes around the wicket. He's got nowhere to go. But he looks quite organised. Looks very smart. Yeah, compact stance. Back waving in the air is wood bowls. This time on the back foot, just dabbing at the ball in front of him, mm. in control of that one as it he pushes it out to the offside, no run. Just trying to catch a glimpse of uh, Wood's speeds at the moment. Andy. Yeah, he's, he's been a bit down, he's on 87. A little quicker today, about one mile an hour on average quicker than he was yesterday, according to the, the Crippies mm. ball course, tracking data. They had the wind to contend with yesterday. It was blustery, wasn't it? Was very it? blustery, yeah. whereas uh, flags are hanging limp in the distance at the moment. Bright blue sky above, a couple of clouds dotted around, much better conditions. As Wood Bowls again sways out of the way, Ajaz Patel. He's looked good there. Yeah, that's well played. Move out of the that's, way well, of that one. that's well played. Very well played. Kept his eye on it. Bobbing and weaving, you know you're going to get a few. He's kept his eye on that beautifully. Dropped the hands and just watched it go past the chest. Well played. Uh, halfway down the pitch, that one. As he crouches. Yeah. And um, and it was funny you were talking about the wind being blustery. Um, the, both the quicks actually were bowling into it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that perhaps Anderson and Broad showed the old stripes <laughs> there and picked the uh, the best end. As Patel is back and across, driving, but miscues it to Rory Burns, who underarm flicks it to James Bracey. Point. No run. You just get the feeling that New Zealand are just wasting a bit of time here, really. They, they probably want to get bowling. You know, you may as well have a bit of a dart here. Perhaps it's up to Blundell to to perhaps 
get cracking with the rate. Well, the perfect situation for New Zealand would be yes. what, around three o'clock. Yeah, just yeah. Forty minutes before tea. Yeah. As little session either side. Wood steams in round the wicket. Loads and bowls to Patel, who defends to the offside. Good length delivery on off stump. Yeah, that would be ideal, wouldn't it? You have two cracks at it. And go and put your feet up and then have another go after tea. So. Yeah, it's supposed to be nice tomorrow as well. They have the best of the bowling conditions on day one. And, and I think this fella's going to come into yesterday it. Yesterday as well. Mr. Patel, Patel. Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to come into it big style. Left arm spinning. He's see a few marks on the pitch just where Neil Wagner is bowled. And yeah. And the sunshine tomorrow. Fingers nice and loose. Pitch just starting to break up a bit. The crack starting to widen with that heat. I think he's going to come into it. Of course, England haven't got that spinner. Leg Gully moving across into third slip. Zach Crawley in that position. Dom Sibley next to him at second. And Joe Root just uh, asking square leg to come out into a leg gully. Dan Lawrence there as Wood. It's through. Adas Patel nearly clips one to short leg as uh, he'll scuttle through for a single. Ollie Pope diving to his left. He's very good in that position. Cool. But <laughs> did he get a hand on that? I think I he know, did. He that would have been one of the best short leg catches you've ever. No. No. No, no, no. You've got to have good reflexes in there. He was quick to the ball, but yeah. it sort of hit the pad and then bubbled off, yeah. 356 for 8 Patel on 1 still then as that was a leg by, Blundell on 33 Andy We mentioned Joe Root giving England a fairly stern talking to in that first drinks break this morning in the first hour before that New Zealand got, scored 63 for no loss in 13 and a half overs, since then 64 for 5 in 23 overs uh, he Told him off didn't he Anderson over the wicket to Patel, the left hander pushes at the ball guides it to Stuart Broad at mid-on. I think that's the first time I've seen sort of Joe Root. Angry. Well, a little bit angry, wasn't he? You could tell that it, it, was a, it was a stern huddle, wasn't it? And no one was sort of like, you know, having a drink or... He's definitely got sterner as yeah. he's aged. Yeah, you can... You, I, I felt that, yeah. I quite liked it, really. Yeah. Good to see. Gentle shuffle forwards into his stride now, Anderson, as he bowls to Patel, who defends on the off stump, back to the bowler and... A, Immaculate. Kicks it up with his feet. Very good forward defensive. Went for a run today. Did you? Well, what more of a jog actually, Tuffers? Where'd you go? Just run. along the canal. Lovely. We were very close to the canal. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah it was nice. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think um, got more canals than Venice, isn't it? But is, is, is that, that right? I think that's right. Okay. <laughs> and he's. Having a look on uh, the internet is Anderson Bowles, and again, Adas right. Patel looking composed and covers the off stump, lunging forwards and defending to the offside, no run. Or more miles of canals than Venice. It, yes, it says, according to the well, Birmingham.gov.uk website, which might not be the most objective uh, yeah. source of canal facts, Birmingham has 35 miles of ca canals, which is said to be more than Venice. Right. So not go. all of them are quite as similar. I'd, like <laughs> I'd like to know where Amsterdam is on that. Wouldn't be far Surf. off. Wouldn't be far off. <laughs> and he leads, leans back in his chair in disgust as Ajaz Patel again defends back to Anderson, who's stretching with his right hand to take the ball on the bounce. No run. What did he do, 5K? Uh, something like that, I yeah. think, yeah. But it, it's funny, because th there's a there's sort of jogging etiquette, isn't there? Well, I don't know, I've being, never done it you know, before. <laughs> you sort of smile and nod as you kind oh, of do you? Okay. run past people. Okay. And... Um, I had this guy approaching me, oh. and I thought, oh, that's that's Danny Rubin, as yes. Anderson round the wicket to Ajaz Patel, defending on the off stump back to the bowler. Two slips in the gully in position for Patel. Who 256 is, for eight, New Zealand. Who is, of course, the England... Um, media manager. And I, right. I was thinking to myself, well, I don't, I don't know if they're actually allowed out of the bubble. Oh. Um, but... I didn't question myself too much because I, I gave this Forrest Gump-like wave yeah. at this man approaching me. Yeah. And then as he got a bit closer, I realised it wasn't him at all. But he obviously felt that it was, it was like jogging etiquette, so he gave me a thumbs up <laughs> as he ran past. You've got away with that sorry, one. I did. Anderson bowls to Ajaz Patel, swinging, looking to play at leg side, but misses it completely as it goes through to 
James Bracey at the end of the over, 356 for eight, slightly shorter of a length that time from Anderson Patel on one, Blundell on 33, Andy. Well, according to Wikipedia, there are more than 62 miles of canals in Amsterdam, <laughs> although the Amsterdam Visitors uh, for Visitors.com website claims only 31 miles. So well, that's a, huge, we that's a huge discrepancy. Who do we believe? Yeah. <laughs> you can't just magic up 30 miles of canals, can you? Tell the truth. Apparently go and measure can. them. Just go and measure them. Um, oh, right, OK. Yeah. Well, uh, you're going tomorrow? Mm. Canal look tomorrow? It's going to be hot know. tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah it will be. I'm not right, sure. We'll see. Depends rehydrate. Early I wake up as Mark Wood bustles in. Shot. Blunder works it off his legs. Tight one as Patel comes through. The throw comes in from Crawley to the striker's end. But misses the uh, stumps and he'll pick up one. Blundell to 34, 357 for eight. That lead now extending to 54. Yeah, nicely tucked off his hip. Right, Blundell. Might just see him just sort of treading water a bit here, the test match, isn't it? From New Zealand, either need to play a few shots or England. Just describing it, yeah. Yeah. Blundell's only faced five balls of the 21 in this partnership. Yeah. Patel one from 16 so far. Just gone a bit stodgy, isn't it? Need something to happen. Two slips and that leg slip for Wood. As again, Ajaz Patel just ducks underneath the short ball, short leg in position as well. 90. You're talking about speed, Zisha. 90, that one. Yeah. So he's not quite as quick as at Lords. I mean, he was up at 95, wasn't he? At Lords and twos and 95. Yeah, tail up. Yeah, proper tail up. Three-day turnaround. Yeah, a bit weary, perhaps. Yeah, it's not long, is it? <laughs> to get your breath back and recover. Which is why it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the likes of Trent Bolt recovers for the mm. Test Championship final as Wood is in round the wicket again to Ajaz Patel, this time getting across to leg stump and raising his arms. Allows the ball to pass through to Bracey. James Anderson having a word with Wood now. It's a proper bowler's union, isn't it? Yeah. They all get together. Yeah, handy having those two at mid-on and mid-off, isn't yeah. it? Even though Brody shelled a few at mid-on, hasn't he, in his time? <laughs> Jimmy, a great fielder, of course. Mm -hmm. Put a few down, Brody. James Anderson's 600 wicket, of course, he dropped, didn't he, at uh, Old Trafford? Wood bowls, Patel drives to extra cover Anderson creeps around to his right to, to collect the ball, didn't time that at all Ajax Patel, slightly fuller on that occasion on the off stump for Wood for uh, the first time really, everything else has been sort of good length and short stuff to Patel Mexican waves going up around the ground, toughers yes, haven't seen that yet, there we go over to our left around the members. Yeah, will the members do it? They never usually do. They did then. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. is that where the members is? I thought the members was underneath us. No? Well... Sort of, yes. On that corner is... Yeah. Wood is around the wicket. Adrian Patel guides it in between the slip cordon and point down to the third man boundary. Four runs that he picks up as uh, he moves to five, 361 for eight and uh, a lead of 58. This partnership becoming quite annoying now for England. Yeah, it's pretty well played. Full toss outside the off stump, just watched it onto the edge of the bat, get something on it, and you've got half a chance of getting four, and that's what happened. A lot of runs have gone down there this test match, haven't they? The third man, I know we bang on about it a bit, but could have saved oof, 50 runs, I reckon. 60 runs have gone down there. Change of tack for Wood, coming over the wicket to the left-hander. Slightly more threatening as he rolls wide of the off stump, sways out of the way of that one. It was a quick head jerk back for Patel at the end of the over. 361 for eight, lead of 58. Patel on five, Blundell on 34. And uh, Dan Lawrence running up. Oh. Yeah. yeah, time for a drink. Bit of a regroup. England have dragged themselves back into this test match after lunch. It was slipping away from them quickly. But uh, decent spell of bowling. 
by the unit. Just two wickets away, lead by 58, which is manageable, I think, on a pretty slow, docile pitch. Hasn't done anything. I think it will turn a bit as the game goes on, but there's no demons in that wicket, I don't think, for the seam bowler. Three wickets uh, that England picks up this morning. With New Zealand three down at the start of the day. Having made 229, Young with the, the final ball of day two. Oh, unlucky, wasn't he? Very unlucky. He played, played so well, well yeah. Well. Deserved that 100 as uh, Taylor was the next to go uh, in the morning session. Caught by Bracey, ball by Stone. Finally, he had a, a wicket at his home ground in Test cricket. And uh, a one that was outside the off stump. He looked to drive it. Taylor was looking good all morning. Uh, but on that occasion, he was undone. Yeah, then, it's a good uh, wicket for England to get that because Taylor can hurt you quickly, can't yeah. they? That, I think that gave him a boost. Sorry, he's carrying on. Nichols was uh, the next to go for 21, caught Bracey, Bob Wood, and then uh, Darren Mitchell looking to pull the ball from Ollie Stone, but straight into the hands of Zach Crawley at mid wicket for six. Uh, the couple to fall after lunch. Neil Wagner promoted up the order. <laughs> Never works. It didn't work, did it? <laughs> Never works. He was out, uh, James Anderson, with his first wicket of the match, and he was visibly delighted with it punching the air and the crowd behind him but uh, that was when the score was on 336 for seven Wagner to go for a duck and then Matt Henry occupied the crease for a little bit there before he was LBW to Wood for 12 so out in the middle at the moment Tom Blundell and uh, Ajaz Patel and uh, they put on eight but it feels like they've been there for a little while a few words from you Phil and then it will be Agates. Yeah, England want to wrap this up. Not particularly hurting England at the moment. As I said, only just put on eight, but they want to get back into the shed and put the feet up and get batting. Knock this lead off. Perhaps get 360 themselves and give New Zealand an awkward day, perhaps, to have a bat. But uh, New Zealand have played well today. Been a good day's test cricket so far. Agas, hello, mate. So he snuck in there. He snuck in very quietly. <laughs> what a, a really, really interesting day. And we're only halfway through, so there's lots more cricket to come. Whether oh, they're listening to us in the car or the sunshine on the beach, I don't know. But uh, it really is. There's so much could happen over the course of uh, these next 50 overs or so. A 35 runs for three wickets in that uh, hour since lunch. Jimmy Anderson's spell, which is uh, just finished, as Stuart Broad's about to replace him. Six overs, three maidens, one for five. Very impressed how Patel's playing, too, because he's had a very hostile field set for him, as inevitably the poor old spinner does. He can't give it back, basically. So short leg, leg slip, you name it, they're all in there, but he's played very bravely so far. Blundell's on 34, Broad's into the attack, he bowls to him. And Blundell, who's no made a real effort so far to press on with it. And I think if I were New Zealand, I might just want him to be a little more expansive. But he plays that defensively again. To be fair, Anderson's given him nothing. And Broad, I'm sure, will also ball that really a nagging line and length. It makes it difficult to hit. But I think he's ought to try and do something because for all the Patels hanging around, he doesn't look to have too many shots. And New Zealand needs another... Well, as many as they can get. No, 30 runs, 25, 30 runs. It goes broad and bowls, and that keeps rather low. Or at least Blundell gave the impression that it had. Playing the ball across the pad out to mid-wicket. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, good cricket. Mm. Uh, I, I've been sat out on the, uh, the gantry for an hour, and uh, I've been studying the holly stat, and there's a, <laughs> a, a very large beach ball that's been blown up. You see, it's uh, just... Just in one of the aisles. Just, well, from uh, what I've seen, there are a number of inflatables no, in there, some of which you can't really mention. Now, this is... <laughs> well, this is the biggest I've ever seen. Just uh, just underneath the uh, the uh, motorway cones. I'll have a look. In goes Broad. Bowls very full. Uh, squeezed out by Blundell. Fielded at uh, midway. Oh, there it is. Yes, it's on the ground. Yeah, it's taking some uh, blowing up. It will take some blowing up. Taken in turns to uh, there's a shark put a there bit as in well. There. There's a shark making its way down. <laughs> this is an incredible story today of a, a diver off Cape Cod who has ended up in a whale's mouth, a hunchback whale. And he's in there for a bit, thinking this isn't going to end very well. 
And so he, he rattled around a bit, and the whale spat him out. <laughs> Incredible story. It goes broad, bowls outside the off stump, it's edged and taken by Root. And that's the end of Blundell. Full ball, and he did try and drive it. But Root, I think, grateful that he's taken the catch just to his left. And so the ninth wicket goes down, the lead is 58. And not as many as New Zealand would have hoped for at lunchtime. Yeah, it's a good grab. Skipper just going to his left, he celebrates, he's just looking at the ball because he obviously knows he, uh, he, he dropped Will Young yesterday at first slip. Lundell played nicely for his 34. He didn't get a great deal of strike for the last uh, half an hour or so. He'll be thinking now, oh, why didn't I play a few more shots, be a bit more aggressive? That lead 58 at one point today, it was looking like the lead would be well over 100. Yep. So we're going to uh, bounce back nicely in this session. It's still a nice lead, still a, a decent lead, and New Zealand uh, are on top and ahead of the game. But uh, I think from a position of lunch when England were looking, uh, looking at uh, a lead of well over 100, uh, they'll be delighted. Now can they get this last wicket, then bat better? Can they go on and bat, which is good? It's, does the odd ball does a bit do I expect that I think the spinner will be important for New Zealand Patel it's been the odd ball bounce but hasn't done a great deal through the air has no it? it's not at all it's a completely different day today lots of blue sky and a scattered cloud but, uh, very little movement and Broad will be keen to wrap this up Trent Bolt's arrived I think you might expect a bit of short stuff third man is going down there he likes to play this sort of a rather imaginative ramp strokes and so on to the short ball I think we'll have a bit of fun now these two won't they I think you might do oh, compare this field for the fast bowler to the field that poor old spinner got <laughs> there's no one under the helmet there's no leg slip <laughs> poor old Patel who can't give it back he's surrounded by close fieldsmen it's got, it's got a, a short third Matt, three quarters for the yes. uh, zoom for the big Yahoo. That uh, he may top edge over that, uh, that kind of four slip area. Broad's on his way, bowls to Bolt, who covers up nicely with a bit of a flick, <laughs> plays that away to mid on. And <laughs> actually, I think Broad will like that very much. He just uh, almost gave a bit of a replay there, a bit of a little flick of the bat as he walked. As he Steve walked Smith past in him. there, wasn't there? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was a. Very nice shot from the number 11. It showed, uh, showed broad, showed broad the bat there. <laughs> broad might have something to say about that. Well, Sibley and Burns will just want this uh, last wicket. There you go. There's the inflatable on the screen, Ag, is it? Yeah. So it's a big one. It's colossal. Mm. 361 for nine. Broad's on his way, bowls to bolt. Who allows that to go by outside the stump <laughs> again? That rather quirky uh, end to the shot. Broad stalks past him at the end of a successful over for Stuart Broad, who's now taken three for 40. He's been excellent, hasn't he? Yep. He's been the pick by a, a good distance. They've all tried, and at times they've looked very good, but uh, consistently Stuart Broad has been the pick of the bowlers. Now, what do you reckon Patel will do here? Do you think he's got a few shots in his locker? Well, we haven't seen them yet. But I think he's going to get some short pitch again. Or got uh, Pope going into short leg yeah. this is the giveaway really the third man coming down Wood's going to come over the wicket Root's been very busy today I think he's been the most active that I've seen him as captain Wood comes tearing in, bowls to Patel, who smears out into the leg side. Should get two, might get more than that. It's a chase for Stone, who fields there in front of uh, the Holly stand. The chap is just collecting his shark, <laughs> taking it up the stand. With <laughs> them the shark trying two. to eat the big. Uh, it is trying to bite the big uh, beach ball. So as you see on that Holly stand, particularly on a Saturday. Three sixty-three for nine. Patel on seven. 
Wait as Wood comes running in, bowls to him, it's pitched up, he guides that into the offside, Burns fields very well. Tumbling to his left and then rolling over a couple of times at point. Half a mind on batting, I'm sure. Thinking, have I got my kit in the right place? Did I set it all out? I think for those uh, England players, I guess they've been out of a few runs. I think this situation now is such a better one. If New Zealand had got to 140, 150 in front, yeah. very, very hard for England to win from there. But now this gives England a, a real good sniff of getting a decent lead. Wood again dashes in from the city end, a bowl's short, and that's very well played by Patel, pulling into the leg side. And uh, it's Lawrence out there, who throws the ball back into Bracey, who's now wearing a sun hat. Yeah, and I think it's always easy batting when you, you, you generally have a, a better sense of winning the game, no, or a potential chance of winning the game, when you've got very little chance of setting New Zealand enough to... to put them under pressure in the fourth innings, which would have been the case if uh, they'd have had a 140-150 lead, but the lead's only going to be around 65-70. Yeah. You, know, you can be that player that makes a massive difference towards England, getting a, a good score that puts a huge amount of pressure on New Zealand. Wood round the wicket, and Patel steps away and hits that away very cleanly into the leg side. Lawrence won't get it, it's another boundary. <laughs> it's a good shot. It's a really good shot, he stepped away. Gave himself a little bit of room. I think he was waiting for the short ball again. It was pitched up. And he's just slogged that away through mid-wicket for four runs. Another man goes out. Got a tail end, I guess, when they start striking. Bowlers generally go full, go short. Just yeah. hit the top of off stump. Yeah, you lose... Lose sight of what, yeah, what, you, lose what you really focus. need to be doing, which is the basics of the game. Short legs retreating now as well. So there's three men on the leg side boundary. Pope probably doesn't need his helmet, he's so deep now in the leg side as well. And this is one slip. Two balls left in this over as Wood comes in, bowls to Patel, who plays really well there, leaning back and guiding out away for four. Steering it, past slip. That's an excellent shot. Brilliant. Picks up four to a fine third man. It's really good, it's just uh, awareness. He knew the short ball was coming, he's got three fielders on the onside boundary, Joe Root, so Patel just sways away. And like you see in the morning with the slip catches, you know, with the coach and the glider into the cord, and well, that was uh, brilliant, they glided down to third man. Porter runs, now where's he going to go? Is he going to go full or short? What are you bowling, I guess? Uh, well, I want to have Bolt down that end, so I'm bowling a high bouncer. OK. Or swing down the leg side. In comes Wood, there, and he bowls, oh no, he's bowled a straight ball, he's been hit into the leg side, another chase for Lawrence, now New Zealand will try and get three if they possibly can, but it's not going to happen, and Lawrence throws the ball back from uh, the leg side boundary, so that was a very productive over for New Zealand. Uh, 14 from it, two oh. fours and three twos, and that... His, Patel's previous highest score in his 10 other test innings was 14, That's so he's now passed that. And there's, problems here. Over. there's problems in the Hollis stand, the beach ball has got... They're the, the trying to really work to keep it in the stand. Yes. Could end up on the pitch. It is a monstrous thing. It is. I can't imagine how they blew it up, but it's, uh, it's controlled again now. 3.75 for nine, so the lead has now got up to 72. You know, little 10-run increments mm. makes a difference. Now, can Broad Let's finish it off here? He's bowling to Bolt. You get that short third man, or fly slip. No one on the boundary, apart from Wood, who's retreating to fine leg. Number 11 on strike, and Broad with a ball in his hand. In he goes, and he bowls to Bolt, who drives him magnificently, imperiously, to mid-on's left hand, and Stone did very well to feel that, because he really crunched that one. Terrific shot from the number 11. A little bit of Ruby gave. Just watch um, Trent Bolt, I guess, on, on pre delivery. Just watch the moment. Watch how low he gets. He kind of squats down. He looks like a man who doesn't like the short ball. Yes. So he's getting ready to duck. Yes. I think England know that because of that third man position. Just watch how low he gets. 375 for nine. Broad's on his way. Yeah, down he goes. Broad bowls to him, and he's got that into the offside, but only as far as Lawrence at cover. 3.75 for nine. Yeah, his um, 
they call it the ready position. You know, you trigger and you're in the ready position. His ready position is the ready position to duck. It is. Well, <laughs> I, I, yes, I know where he's coming from. I remember spending much of my time waiting to go into bat next and practicing, practicing the duck in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what you're going to get. <laughs> now, can Broad finish it? The lead is 72. Bolt on strike, Broad's on his way, bowls to him and he's heaved at this, oh he's got four! Off an inside edge, the ball skims away down to the fine leg boundary. Broad doesn't look very happy, the lead goes up to 76. And it's incredible how quickly it gets up there. Yeah, you just wouldn't want another couple of overs like England's just had where the ball's just uh, flying to all parts. Yep. 76, is uh, it's a decent lead already. Where's the bouncer coming? It's got me now, hasn't it? He hasn't bowled one yet. There's no one back. He's so either a bouncer or a slower. A slower might be a good idea. Yeah, cut it. Hit it straight in the air. Broad. It's a long chat with Jimmy Anderson there, who's fielding at mid-off. We're talking, I think, about... Oh, he's, he's going through here. He's mimicking a short ball, Broad. He's mimicking how Bolt might play it, so he's saying to Bolt down there, a short ball's coming your way, Bolt, but it probably won't. It might be the bluff. Let's see. In goes Broad again. He's there and he bowls. Yes, it's the bluff. <laughs> a low full toss, almost a, a Yorker there. Bolt stepping over again, drives it down to mid-on. But if we, if we identify the last two overs of bowling, I think there's been one ball that would hit the top of the off stump, and that was the ball that was inside edge back past the stumps for four, so a lot of fortune for Bolt. The rest of the delivery has been like too full or... That's true. To tell, we're just too short. Just hit the top of off stump. Man going out to deep square leg now, so very much the message to Bolt. You can expect one whizzing round your ears. But again, will Broad do that? Or is he just going to try and knock him over? They're making a big play of this. Anderson was gesturing there from mid-off as well. Bolt's on four. In goes Broad, is there any bowls to him? It is shorter, he's flogged that down the ground. Well, that was aiming for mid-wicket, and it's gone past mid-on's left hand for four. <laughs> he nearly collided in the uh, the middle. <laughs> Patel ran straight and Bolt, he was looking at the ball, he, I think he was admiring the shot, and <laughs> they collided into each other. Ugly pull shot, but effective. And that was, I'm sure he was trying to hit that through mid-wicket. <laughs> Somehow it's gone straight down the ground. And he's still pointing with his arm. I don't quite get that, Bolt. No, he's pointed where the ball's going. He's saying, oh, sure, see. that's where the ball's that's gone. That's where it's gone. Yeah, he's... Uh... Broad again, runs in, bowls another bouncer, and <laughs> Bolt this time sways out of the way, reverses. It's a bit of a comedy act out there. It's when he's bowling. Uh, it's, it's not the case at all with Bolt. He takes it very seriously. But it, you know when your teammates are enjoying it. They're all crowded up there. They're watching. Yeah, you'd be watching this one. It's, uh, it's good entertainment. It's, it's not quite in the Tufnell league of comedy, but not I, far off. I always, if I'm having bad days, I, I always go on YouTube and I put. Um, and all you have to do is on YouTube. So Dan's search, coming in here, Michael. If, you, if you're having a bad day and you want a bit of a, a little bit of a light, light-hearted moment to to give yourself a smile, if you go on YouTube and you search Phil Tufnell facing Shane Warne. And there's an over that he faces from Shane Warne, where Shane Warne's bowling around of the wicket into the rough. <laughs> and I, 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 I suggest you all watch it. <laughs> it sounds a hoot, actually. <laughs> You've sold me. <laughs> yes. He has a rather large white helmet on, and he's trying to kick him off. <laughs> kick him. <laughs> you have to watch it. Does... does does Warney toy with him, so uh, deliberately doesn't get him out just because of the theatre and the spectacle? He actually ends up going over the wicket because he doesn't get him around the wicket. Oh, it's right. just for one, one over, it's perfect, it's brilliant. Well, I think you were in the box with us at Lords, weren't you, when we were seeing Tuffers evade a shortish ball. Roots in, he's starting a new over. Root, can you believe it? And he's bowled a ball just outside off stump, which has been left by Patel. And it was pretty close to that off stump. I can't remember who bowled the ball, but it was it, it was a back of a length ball. But Tuff has jumped so high, and as Root bowls again forward in defence, comes Patel into the offside. There's no run, that it went underneath his groin and just over the top of middle stump. <laughs> it's an extraordinary 
extraordinary cricketing moment. Here's Root round the wicket. Patel works his delivery into the onside but can't beat the field. Pope picks up 383 for nine. Patel 19. He's batting like Kumar Sangakara at the moment. As Root is into him. And he just oh, has this down the leg side. He has a little flirtation with good the ball, take. but misses it. Was good good take by Bracey down the leg side. Bracey standing up with the helmet on, of course. Dispensed with the sun hat for now. Root in. Patel defends into the onside, but squarer this time, so they can get a single. Pope moves to his left field. I'm looking forward to this. 384 for nine. Yeah, Bolt facing a bit of off spin. I, I, I haven't seen a lot of Trent Bolt's batting. But from what I've seen against yes. the team is he's, he's an orthodox, uh, and I can't imagine he'll be blocking too many. He's only got one ball to face. It'll be interesting to see if he's going to go after this one ball, I suppose. There's a long on, a long off, as you'd expect, a deep mid-wicket and a long leg. As Root is into Bolt, Bolt comes down a wicket and clatters it over his head for four. That was a proper shot. There's a long on and a long off back, and he's got it almost exactly equidistant between the two of them. And this... Tenth wicket partnership is now becoming very irksome for England. The lead is 85, New Zealand 388 for nine at the end of the over. Patel 20, Bolt 12 of nine balls, and he's Altman. In the partnership, uh, 27 from 20 deliveries. It's always exciting. It's been an exciting day, hasn't it? I mean, it's this session particularly, and New Zealand look like they might be running away with the game before lunch. We're very proactive, and then up to lunch, they slowed down a couple of wickets, slowed their progress. After lunch, England have fought right back, but... You kind of feel another 20-30 is going to make yeah. life terribly difficult for England. I, I always feel when, when you're already chasing a lead and then the last wicket partnership just kind of pushes that lead on and a bit of frustration mm. starts to develop. <sighs> Lower order runs are so important. Oh, I, always feel, I always feel it gets you one. <laughs> it yes. always seems to be a momentum shift in the game. You, it gets you one early wicket. Well, the England Wait side see, but made it to number one, they had a marvellous tail because they had a, a fine keeper batter at seven in prior and then Swan and Broad were both proper batters in their day at that point in their careers. Broad in the left-handed Patel who gets struck on the pad. That looks very close. It's not been given. I think it's going to be referred. Uh, oh, now is Bracey saying I think he got a bit of bat on it? Bracey's making that sort of indicator of perhaps a little bit of bat there. Otherwise this looked <laughs> Very, very close. Broad obviously wants it, and Root has succumbed to the pressure of Broad's disbelief that he was about to be denied. <laughs> how, many, how many reviews have they got left? Two, two, two left. Two left. Yeah. To to take one it. It's, it's, it looked very adjacent, but is there bat? I think it's very full. And well, it's it on the. Okay, just rock and roll. I'm that, not please. sure there is bat on this. Let's take a little look at this. Okay, appears to be no bat, Bob. I think it's pad pad. I think it's pad pad. I think it's pad pad. But is it umpire's call? Going through. Uh, take it one, one frame back, please. Right. So pad the pad issue pad. here is that the bat and the ball and are very close together. Right, keep going through frame by frame. Now, then, where the impact is definitely yeah, the pad. Yeah, clear their light. So pad first. Here we go. Ball, ball tracking. tracking when available, please. Zoltman's giving it out. Umpire Zoltman. The finger is up. Ball tracking coming up now. Let's see. Out. Pitching That's out. it. Three reds. New Zealand's innings is over. Broad Pitcher picks up his fourth wicket. New Zealand all out for 388. They will have a lead of 85. It could have been a lot more. It could have been a little less. The game is magnificently poised. And the beautiful, sunny Birmingham day and the rest of the, rest of the day set up absolutely magnificently for trumpet-blowing fans and uh, shirtless fans alike. Michael Vaughan, what do you make of England's display after lunch? Yeah, very, very good. I think I'll be delighted uh, with only having to look at an 85-run uh, deficit because uh, I always felt it was going to be well over 100 with the way that uh, New Zealand were batting, the way that they played in the morning. In the afternoon, they've just uh, managed to go through New Zealand, really, with some high-class bowling. Nice stump to stump. A little bit of fortune at times, but uh, it just gives England a glimmer. A glimmer of hope to go and get 300, 320, and then ask New Zealand to chase something very tricky in the fourth innings of the match. I guess always with this England uh, batting lineup, there's always that vulnerability of, you know, they could easily be four or five down before they even pass that 85 run deficit. Uh, and that's a concern, New Zealand. They'll bowl well on this. You feel the likes of Bolt, Wagner, uh, Henry, particularly 
Patel, there's plenty there for the spinner. It's not going to be easy, but uh, from where they were a few hours ago to where they are now, uh, I think England will be delighted. Andy, can you tell me how many overs remain in the day? Uh, 40, well, it, after the two are deducted, it'll be 45. Overs 45, well, how, how wonderful, because you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. It means that we are exactly halfway through the game. And we've had two innings, mm. so it doesn't get better set up than that. The ground staff are out, brushing away the dust, pairing the footmarks and remarking the creases. So I'm going to run you through the scorecard. Um, it's an innings that lasted 119.1 overs, the best part of well, four sessions, isn't it, really? The first man to go is Tom Latham, trapped LBW by Broad for six from 16 balls. Next to go was Dean uh, Devon Conway, who batted... Set very well in partnership with Will Young, a partnership of 122, but he was out at 137 for two, flicking a ball off his pads straight down the throat of Zach Crawley at deep backward square, made 80 from 143. Uh, next to go was Will Young, last wicket to fall yesterday off what turned out to be the last ball of the day, caught by Pope. With the bowling of Dan Lawrence, Lawrence's first wicket, he went for 80, that was, sorry, 82, that was 229 for three. Then today, uh, New Zealand started splendidly. They really got after England. They sort of ambushed them, really. And a uh, partnership of 70, 63 was eventually broken when Ross Taylor was well caught by Bracey off the bowling of Stone for 80 from 139 balls. That was 292 for four. Henry Nichols strangled down the leg side. Decent bit of bowling from Wood. It was fast, got a little bit of glove. Taken again by Bracey. 21 from 56 for Nichols. That was 312 for five. Then uh, Daryl Mitchell was really well caught by Crawley at mid-wicket. It was a short ball, pulled straight at him. It was a sharp catch, which he took well. Mitchell went for six from 22. That was 3-3-5 for six. Then Neil Wagner with a lovely, lovely ball from Anderson that just kissed, caressed, if you like, the very top of the off stump to bowl him. For naught from three, that was 3.36 for seven. Matt Henry, LBW to Wood for 12 from 14. That's 3.53 for eight. Tom Blundell. Caught by Root, a nice sharp catch at first step. England's catching has not been great this game, but some of the catches they did take were sharp. Again off the bowling abroad, Blundell made 34 from 77. And then the last to go there, Ajaz Patel. The, the omega, if you like, of this innings, if it began with the alpha of Latham's LBW to Broad, well, the omega was Ajaz Patel's LBW to Broad for 20. 388 all out the bowling figures. Jimmy Anderson, 29 overs, 9 maidens, 1 for 68. Stuart Broad, pick of the bowlers, 23.1 overs, 8 maidens, 4 for 48. Mark Wood, 25 overs, 3 maidens, 2 for 85. Ollie Stone, 24 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 92. Joe Root, bowled 15 overs, wicketless overs, none for 45. And Dan Lawrence, 1 for 16, he picked up that wicket, which may have been the vital one mm. yesterday of Will Young off the last ball. One for 16 from three. So there you have it. New Zealand bowled out for 388, a lead of 85. Now, we've got a letter that's come in. I'm just going to take a little bit of time over this. It comes from Tom Gregg, who says, Dear all at TMS, you may remember reading out an email about my dad and I being brought together by listening to TMS. He is in his nursing home and me on my chilly narrow boat during one of the Sri Lanka tests a few months ago. I wanted to send an update. My dad passed away on Sunday, having lived nobly with dementia shortly after lunch on day five with England 47 for no loss. We listened to the test match together in his room all the way up to the end. I want to thank TMS for adding such happiness, humour and normality to his final few days and hours. I know moving forward, whenever I listen to the familiar voices of TMS, I will be reminded of him, as I'm sure is already the case for many other listeners who have lost lovers of cricket. Wishing you all the greatest warmth and thanks in memory of David Clegg, out for 81, a match-winning innings. Well, Tom, condolences from us all here. Thank you for that lovely message. And uh, I know a lot of people are having a tough time. I, I note that David Clegg, 81, we've had a few 80s and 81s in this in this match so far but uh, as we say condolences to you Tom on the passing of your dad um, Andy on the subject of 80s you were getting well positively an attack of the vapours at the thought of the numbers of 80s that we'd, we'd had in this um, test match so far obviously England had a couple didn't they with Dan Lawrence and um, 
Rory Burns. Yes. We've had a few in this innings. Three. Took three. So that's five eighties in the first, and it scores between eighty and eighty-two. Yes. Eight, oh. Two eighty-one for England. One of them not out. Lawrence. Then uh, Conway and Taylor. Eighty. Young. Eighty-two. And that ties the record for most batsmen scoring eighties in a single Test match. A single Test match. Yes. So what? One more eighty. We got a world record. Absolutely. Oh. Are we prepared for that? Well, I mean, emotionally, I, I don't think you can prepare for that kind of record. No, well, I mean, I, I, I had a very emotional moment at um, the Surrey's match. Was it against Middlesex? I think it was against Middlesex when their opening partnership was 135 in both innings, which is the highest identical first wicket partnership by one side in the history of first class cricket. It's joint highest with um, the partnership between two Sussex openers in the 1970s, John Barkley, I think, being one of them. Um, and what was an even more extraordinary statistical curio was that Middlesex's opening partnerships were also identical. I think there were 14, which is remarkable. Kathy Pierce has emailed. She says, I know summer has arrived when I can tune in to my favourite commentary. I'm listening to you while sitting on Plymouth Ho. It's a glorious day and there's an abundance of yachts, dinghies, pleasure cruisers, kayaks and other vessels to watch. My husband introduced me to cricket nearly 40 years ago. He loved listening in and I like to think of him and remember happy days when I do so. Thank you for bringing the sound of summer to us. Thank you, Cathy, and thank you all, to all our listeners who uh, sent such kind and generous messages to us. Um, I'm going to change the tone now because I've got a bone to pick with uh, Jay Coney who reliably informed me that Ajaz Patel wasn't overly encumbered with batting skills. You shouldn't uh, be so trusting. No. No, clearly not. What I saw was Brian Lara, Kumar <laughs> Sangakara <laughs> and David Gower rolled into one. <laughs> what were you talking it's, about? No, he, he <laughs> hung in very well, didn't he? I played some shots as well. Uh, well, he, he did when he realised Bolt was batting at the other end. Uh, yes, uh, he stuck in, didn't he, with Blundell and then he... Yeah. Yes, he did. He did. And, and it was a very handy little 27 last wicket partnership as far as New Zealand were concerned. Well, doesn't it feel different? Eight, for some reason, yeah, 80, 85 to yeah, 50, 58 feels so different. Well, it, the other interesting, how long is it going to take the vicar uh, of Sibley uh, to, to sort of knock these off, these runs? Um, well, if England are relying on it being Sibley knocking them off, then it could be sometime after lunch tomorrow. <laughs> Is my my guess? <laughs> well, so so I mean that is a, that is a little bit of an issue, isn't it? Um, yes. But uh, England weren't able to get the ball to swing quite as much as they would have liked. It'll be interesting to, to see can Bolt, uh, can Henry won't won't swing it, but he'll try and hit the track and get the ball to snap from that position, to perhaps bringing and drawing the batsman forward for the edge. That's what he'll try and do. And I think they've just got to be prepared, New Zealand, to to bowl a little fuller than they might feel they should, um, because that's where you get your, I think, those rewards. Yes, you can go for the odd drive and through the, you know, through the field, but I think you can also get those edges either onto the stumps if it's a little bit slower, batsmen pushing a little bit far out with their hands, creating a gate, if you like, for the ball to go through. Um, and New Zealand's you just got to make sure they take their catches. So it's an interesting period of play until England can start feeling really comfortable again and then thinking of looking further into the match. So New Zealand have earned about a session here, I think. It's, it's, it's thrillingly poised, isn't it? An 85 lead, and we're exactly halfway through the match. Yes. 45 overs remain in the day, and then two days. And, and we're halfway with the wickets. We're halfway with the wickets. Yes. It's perfect. Mm. It's, I mean, it, you, couldn't, you couldn't have designed it any better. It's, it's almost like there's an invisible hand that's bringing it all together. Matt Henry is ready. He's going to start up from the city end, right arm over the wicket to the left-handed Burns. Burns lets the first ball go by to the keeper. Um, Andy, are you going to put into context for us this 85 deficit? We talked last year about, well, we talked today, but we 
We saw last year how England came back from a deficit of more than this to beat Pakistan. What's, what's sort of what's England's record in these kind of situations? Well, in recent years, they've had some good victories from, from fairly sizable first innings deficits. 107 against Pakistan in that uh, fantastic test at Old Trafford last year. Henry in again to Burns. Burns edges and is taken. Caught a brilliant diving catch at second slip. Latham. Oh, Latham. It is a that is a wonderful catch. He had to go for it because it, I don't think it would have carried to second slip. To first slip, I beg your pardon. First slip being deeper. Latham dived across him and took it just off the ground. And in the first over, New Zealand have made the breakthrough. And it's Rory Burns, the man they've got for a duck. Well, there's that drive again that I was just mentioning, that length that the batsman feels he can play through the offside. And uh, it's Burns this time, and that's a very important wicket. He's been in such good form for England. It has held the top of the order together, and, and suddenly he's dismissed. So just the start New Zealand would have wanted, really, and Latham at second slipped, as you say going across, being very determined to go towards the ball. He's a keeper himself, of course, in one-day cricket. He's got good set of hands. So just a nice start for New Zealand, and Henry will be delighted. What a contrast with England's yeah. slip catching. It's been a little bit more ropey, the slips and, and keeper. But straight away, straight on that, Latham. I mean, the clarity of mind, he just went for it. There was no hesitation, just dived. The, the way slips are set up, I'm sure you know, listening at home, first slip is deeper, second slip is slightly more advanced. And uh, Latham felt, at any rate, that that ball wouldn't have carried to first slip, so he's taken the responsibility himself. Of course, he's got to keep his hands, hasn't he? Which is helping him, but um, he's still got to make the ground and move to well, it without the gloves. And two hands, that's again, that he took a good catch in the first innings as well. England none for one, Henry is in, to the right-handed Crawley who lets this go by, through to the keeper, there's no run, Crawley's coming in off the back of a pretty miserable run of form, 11 innings, 106 runs, is that right, Andy? Uh, yes, nine single-figure scores. That. So he's under an enormous amount of pressure, this is the last test innings he's going to get before the five-match series against India later in the summer, England need him to score runs, but... He'll be feeling a burden, a weight of pressure, you would think. Three slips, gully, backward point. Henry is in to Crawley. Crawley lets this go by outside the off stump into the keeper's gloves. It's the fourth time England have been uh, naught for one in their last five test matches. The, 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 the fourth time, did you say? Uh, sorry, uh, third time. Sorry. Third time, Slightly naught for one. But they've also had a, a two, uh, two for one and a four for one in that time for one and a four for one and three naught for ones no it's the fourth time so fourth time in six I've, I've messed that up completely you're right Andy no books on the floor. <laughs> Henry's in clipped away nicely by Crawley he's underway he's going to pick up a single down to long leg Bolt tidies up as the building and um, England are underway one for one sigh of relief I think from Crawley there he's off the dreaded pair and it brings Sibley on to strike for his first ball the sun is shining gloriously. It's a beautiful day. It feels like a great day for batting. It does. It certainly does. It doesn't always turn out that way, though, does it? Well, it match <laughs> situations and all that. <laughs> no. Uh. So, Sibley's marking his guard. Well, he's marking lots of guards, I think. Yes, why, why, why would that be? Mm, he just wants to know. Sometimes batsmen... You know, we'll take an off stump and they're just to let themselves know. And you always listen very carefully to that information. Henry into Sibley. Sibley's first ball is picked away nicely out through long leg. And again, it's going to be picked up by Bolt. Each batter has one. Crawley one, Sibley one, England two for one. More thoughts from Jeremy Coney. And then it will be somebody else eventually. So I'll keep going for a while. I'm, I'm messing it up too, Andy. You keep going. <laughs> Well, I'll try and put it all together here. That, that was a successful over, wouldn't you say, for New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could do well, both of these jobs, right? No, uh, but it was, and, and Henry will be delighted that he's been able to get one on target, especially to Burns, who's uh, got a century already and an 80 against New Zealand. And so it's an important wicket to take very early on when the lead is perhaps not quite as substantial as New Zealand might have liked. Yes, it's uh, somehow 
It's both one of those feel... nothing kind of leads, if you know what I mean. It's, well, both um... sides feel so disappointed at the end of their first innings, mm. don't they? England, because they feel that they didn't quite make the most of the first day batting conditions, but they also felt good about having made it to yeah. 303. And similarly, New Zealand will be disappointed they didn't push on to 450, but they'll also be pleased they made it to 388. It's a confusing thing. And, well, Andy is, is pacing around, he's prowling. Well, he's, he doesn't like to make those errors, does he? He's, no, what's he missing? He's missing a colour of a pen, I think. Is it? Well, yes. which, which colour pen are you missing? Well, Andy? I think it's the 43rd colour. Right. Oh, he's furious. He's furious with rage again. Bolt into Sibley. And Sibley covers up in defence, pushes up to middle. So this is interesting. New Zealand are attacking Sibley in a strength. Um, and often that can be a weakness early on for a player because they like to play the stroke. So there's a leg gully in position. There's a man also catching in Patel just in front of square. And a, quite a wide mid-on as well. So three catching players. Bolt in to Sibley. And Sibley try, pushes forward in watchful defence, but we'll get some runs for it as it goes through mid-on. It's being pursued by Wagner, and Wagner will just claw it back and throw in. It was just no more than a little defensive push, but he got it straight enough and to the left of mid-on and picked up three. England five for one. The deficit now... 80. That swung a bit. It's There's more swing there than it feels like Anderson got the entire innings. Yep, just a wee bit, or just a tad full from Bolt. If anything, sometimes Bolt will go searching. Um, and, and he's just got to make sure that he gets that nice length, kisses along the, the pitch, which is what you know swing bowlers tend to do. Can he get one to go across Crawley here? They've strengthened the cordon. New Zealand, they've got three slips in a gully now. That man who was at leg gully has come across. That's Mitchell in third slip. Here is Bolt into Crawley. Crawley drives nicely through extra cover. It's going to run up towards the boundary. It is being pursued. It might be another three, you know. Got a lot of threes in the first innings. And uh, it's another three here. Didn't quite have the power to make it to the boundary, but it was a controlled shot by Crawley and already... He'll be feeling so much better. He was undone in the first innings by a terrific bit of bowling from Neil Wagner, who got him with one that swung back in and played it really late, and he got a bit spooked and offered a catch next ball. Andy, are you, are you done yet? It's like just... There's nothing like just, losing your favourite colour, though, coloured pencil. Well, it's just all this faffing. Or is it a in pen? My, in my eye line, do you know yeah. what I mean? A, peripheral vision has just got this, this fussed scorer. Bolt is in to Sibley, short, ducking underneath. No run. I just started Zach Crawley with a green pen. Is that bad? A notepad fell on the floor and the pen rolled under the mobile air conditioning unit. Oh, no. Is that what's happened? It's very traumatic, Daniel. I don't really want to talk about it. Well, I'm very he was sorry. He, you'd missed him as actually talking to the air conditioning unit. Has he? Oh, yeah. Have you, have you given it a name? <laughs> <laughs> Gerald? <laughs> You try to coax it out of him, are you? Bolt into Sibley. Sibley works a full ball into the onside. Can't beat the fielder, though. Eight for one, the score remains. Both batters on four. We're in the second over. The wicket to fall, Rory Burns. Caught by Tom Latham quite splendidly, diving away to his right. Two-handed in front of first slip. He was second slip, just in case you're moderately confused, because you'll, you'll know that Tom Latham does also keep wicket, but Blundell's keeping. Latham at second. As Bolt comes in to complete his first over. Sibley defends up to mid on. Can't beat the fielder. That is the end of the over. And uh, this time we'll do it. Jeremy, yes, some certainly. thoughts from you on this start, and then it will be Alison Mitchell. Yeah, not big swing for, uh, for Trent Bolt, but just coming back slightly, so he's threatening the stumps, and he's just a little bit full at the moment. Sibley able to, to sort of go with the swing a little into his favoured side, which is, of course, the league side. Uh, and if he can get one to just hold its line and go across the bows of the vicar, then that would be, that would be good for, from a New Zealand perspective and bring the slips into play. Afternoon, Jeremy. Hello, Ali. How are you? Very well. You it's it's yes. well set up, isn't it? It's yes, now. it's a lovely day. 
three slips and the gully. The sun's shining. And England having to make up a, a deficit here. 77 behind as they are. Henry bounding in and Crawley coming forward, defending the ball. Drops dead into the offside and there's no run. And the last seven wickets falling for 96 runs in all for New Zealand. Very good effort, particularly after lunch. England needed to find a clatter of wickets. And they managed it. Found more that they needed after the lunch break. Henry again turning at the end of his mark. Slender live figure in bowls. Full once more to Crawley. Hasn't coming forward to the, the onside. Mid on is there to field. No run. Early loss of Burns has certainly added an extra complexion to the remainder of this afternoon's session. Half an hour. Does half an hour to bat before tea equate to a tricky little period? A well, bit longer than a tricky period, isn't it? It's one of those ones, though, that you can't really get yourself, you know, sit, mm -hmm. can you? Crawley, tall batsman, awaits as Henry is in, dropping into the offside. Quick drop and run. As Patel moved in to pick up. That's a good run. Mm, good very intent. good. Both uh, responding very quickly to that. There's only, uh, there's a mid-off course and then one just Patel and he's left-handed, which means he's actually having to get round that almost to throw at the stumps at the at the bowler's end. So, a good run. Sibley looks around him, surveys the field, notes the three slips in the gully and now notes the fine leg, the square leg, notes that Wagner is uh, walking in mid on and Henry is in over the wicket as he comes forward outside edge but it's guided down into the ground goes between third slip and gully for four soft enough hands and to move on to 13 for one yeah well it's just a question of how wide now it's reasonably close in in terms of sort of about a four and a half stump simply has got lots of movements that would take far too long to describe in between balls, but he's just angled it down between a quite a small gap between third, third slip and gully now. Yeah, it's closed up, hasn't it? It's fraction. Henry in again, forward comes Sibley, leaning well over the ball. Wagner fields at mid on. He practiced that forward defensive stroke. And what about the the pace of scoring and the, the time? At the moment, it's really about getting through to T. Seeing where they are, laying a platform, making up the deficit is aim number one. These little targets that teams have, landmarks to reach. Henry, dark shadow beneath his feet. He runs in outside the off stump and a shouldering of arms from Sibley, a fairly elaborate one, as he allows that one to go through to the keeper, Blundell. End of the over, 13 for one on the board. I wonder if, if it might enter Latham's mind if Sibley is on strike... As it gets a little closer to T, if he might just have a look at the left arm spinner to him, and maybe from this end, with there's some foot marks for the right arm overs, you can see them quite easily just gazing at the ground, and and maybe just try and work him round a little bit. I think openers aren't accustomed to facing spin early on in their innings and I, th I think it's look there's nothing to be lost I don't think in giving someone like Patel a couple of overs just at, a, at an opener who's a wee bit uncertain and tends to push at the ball a wee bit with an attacking field Bolt into Crawley or oh, there's some prodigious movement away from Crawley and taken by the keep almost in front of first slip and that moved off the pitch and sharply moved away with a hard ball as well for the spin when the ball's still relatively new. Well, you'd sometimes get a wee bit more bounce, mm. don't you? He could use an arm ball. Uh, th there's a number of options. But he can just probe and, I think, attack the defensive stroke. You know, man in on the offside, man in on the leg side, as well as the slip. Three slips in the gully. Bolton again past the outside edge. Had Crawley prodding forward with no great deal of certainty. Yeah, that's the one across the bows, isn't it, Ali? That's the one that doesn't swing. And players starting to look for the little bit of movement, and that's playing quite well away from yourself too. So a little error there from Crawley. He's, he's survived it, though. 
Looks like someone's got a saw to the bottom of his bat. It's very straight across, almost a right angle. None of that nice curve you used to get at the bottom of the base of the bat. Looks like openness to his stance with Bolt over the wicket. That's clipped away off leg stump, but he picks out Patel at mid-wicket and tumbles to his knees as he fields safely. It's a nervy period for the England supporter right now, with the early wicket fallen. And two batters at the crease looking to get settled. In particular, Crawley, who's, who hasn't had success and, of course, was out for a four-ball duck. And two single-figure scores at Lords as well. Pressure's mm. on. He's on five now. Standing stock still. He's a bat twizzler as well, isn't he? Crawley twizzles his bat and then settles over it. Waits as Bolts is in full. Oh, it's beautifully driven for four down the ground. Didn't need a great deal of footwork. He stroked that through mid off for four. Yes, lovely stroke. Just entirely appropriate, really. Scrambled seam from Bolt. Wasn't looking to bring it back in. Length wrong and Crawley onto it very quickly. Nice balance. Yeah, Mid-off is up, it's Conway. As Bolt is in again now, it's come back in on him a touch, it's cramped him for some room. There's bat down to it, bat onto pad, and ball dribbles back up the pitch, he wanders away towards square leg, settled himself, wandering out of his ground a little now, and a few prods here or there at this biscuit-coloured pitch. Yeah, it's a wonderful feeling when you get that boundary away. Feel the ball off the full face of the bat. There he goes, twizzling again, twizzling. Settling. Tall man Crawley. And Bolts in again, pushes one across him. That moves late after it passes the batsman. A little shake back in towards the keeper to end the over. England 68 behind, 17 for one. Crawley on to nine now after the boundary. 13 balls that he's faced. Yeah, a, little, a, a lovely shot during the over for Crawley. That'll make him feel so much more confident about his game that he can get the foot to the, towards the ball and he can just play through it. It was a check drive as well, and it raced away. So that's good, uh, and he seems to know a bit more of where that off stump is. Bolt will also, I think, be slightly pleased that he's got the ball to move later in flight. I thought a couple of times in that over and also managed to get one to go across. New over, Henry continuing. Over the wicket he goes, and Sibley's up on his toes, defending ball, which required him to keep that bat face down and to rise, get on top of the ball. And Patel's there at point and swinging round to cover. Henry did a good job in the first innings for New Zealand. He picked up a couple of important wickets. I've maybe ended with three, something like that. He's quite a strong shoulder bowler. And now, left alone by Sibley, watch for his off stop. Likes bowling with the Duke's ball, had, I think, 70-odd, between 70 and 80 wickets when he had, I think, a season at Kent a couple of years ago. Yeah, plenty of experience in English conditions, didn't he? He relished, he said on the opening day, he'd relished the Edgbaston crowd. Right. And, and he really enjoyed, I think, the, as he described it, sort of banter, a bit of teasing from the crowd, yep. good-natured. Enjoyed that. And he goes now to Sibley, a little straighter, Sibley forward. And defensive to Wagner at mid on, no run. Yep, that's the second little thought he'll have is to aim at that front pad of Sibley, who just tends to bring it across and straight down the line and sometimes has to play across, his, across the ball slightly. So runs the risk of perhaps missing that inside edge. The breeze blowing across the ground. It has done for most of the day as Henry's in again outside the off stump. Or carries through to Blundell around about chest height. And he gathers safely. Stuart Broad, four for 48 in the England innings. James Anderson picking up one wicket. It was Ollie Stone taking the first wicket of the day. Really important breakthrough that was to dismiss Ross Taylor. As he did, it was the first over that Stone bowled. He replaced Anderson. Henry in again, edged, and it's caught at third slip. Hugs all round because it's a second wicket. In this half hour before tea, England asked to try and get through to the break, but Sibley is on his way cheaply. 
Yeah, a ball really that Sibley, could he have left it? I just don't know, but he's actually just fenced at it a little bit. It's, I thought he was playing back. Yes, he is, and he's squared right around, so the chest is facing towards the bowler, and it's gone quite quickly. A little bit more bounce there from Henry, as I say. A bit of a shoulder bowler, uh, and well taken. Two hands again. This one's by Mitchell at third slip, so Sibley has to depart. 17 for two. This is a good little session, this mini session for New Zealand. I mean, I originally thought perhaps if they can get maybe three wickets before they England are able to pass the deficit of 85 runs, then they might be happy with that. Who knows? We'll see now. That means the captain's in straight away, the important wicket of root always amidst what's a fairly inexperienced kind of batting lineup for England, but they do have potential, those players, and I, I hope they do stick with some of these players, and they're not sort of chopping and changing and moving them around the order, and some of them have been, some of them have been seven and then six, and some have been three, and then they go to opener, and then they're back to four. The only one who's stayed really, really in the same position has been Pope, five or six, that's where he's right through the winter, that's where he's been for England. One thing's got to be said is that New Zealand have held all the catches when they've come their way. Yeah. It's another one for Daryl Mitchell because he held on to a few in the slips, a couple, didn't he, in the first innings. But Sibley out for eight, and the deficit 68 at this point. The cry of root as he came out to the middle. Sounds a bit like booing, but never is. Three slips in the gully then, Root facing up to his first ball from Henry. It's outside the off stump. He watchfully lets it go through to the keeper. So it's been a, a good little session so far for New Zealand and England 17 for two, 68 behind second innings. Just uh, more on England's troubled recent starts. I mentioned it's the, the fourth time in the last six tests they've been naught for one. It's the eighth time since the Lord's Test of 2019 against Australia they've been naught for one in 44 innings and 24 tests. Before that, they hadn't lost their first wicket without scoring for 53 tests, 100 innings, way back to 2015. Uh, they've had a, various other fairly low opening stands as well so it's been a recurring problem for England uh, over the last couple of years yeah, it means that Root is forever coming in needing to help to, to rebuild and steady Bolt in what's well, off the outside edge of Crawley's bat tentative prod into the ground and then to third slip yeah, well that, times. that's that movement, isn't it, again, of the last over. It gets in a batsman's mind. And it almost adds, you know, the later the swing happens, it, it I mean, A, it's interrogating last-second batting. You know, when you have to wait, you can't make the decision early and push the bat into the line because it moves. Secondly, it makes them slightly quicker. Crawley crouching, waiting for Bolt. And that off stump and forward angles it wide of... That gully on that occasion. Because you're having to wait until that last moment, that last second, and when you've actually settled on what is the line that I have to play. So just a bit of movement for the New Zealanders. Enough. And from the seam seems to have been the, the issue for both the openers. It's not the swing that's caused them the problems. Bolt certainly found the, the movement left arm over again and Crawley similarly off stump angles the bat and puts the ball into the ground but not looking convincing at, at the moment these first few balls of this Trent Bolt over he wanders away towards square leg Crawley scrapes at the crease yes it's that do I play or do I leave you know the uh, his his looks like his instinct is to play doesn't it to play the big shot, the nice drive through the covers, and that's caused him a few problems in the series so far. When you've already played one drive, you would have felt at that point things are starting to work. Bolt full, he's looking to drive again. The one-handed half stop from Conway enables Crawley to go through for a single. And it's left to Wagner to gather, moving across from his position at mid-on. 18 for two, Crawley into double figures on 10. So Roots just faced one ball so far. And now he'll face up to Trent Bolts, a minute or so away from the tee break. So two more balls in this over. This is be the last before tee. Root carefully marking his guard. Let's get through to the break and take on the evening session afresh. Bolt to the dark shadow beneath his feet. 
Red soles of his boots runs away from us, pushes one across route again, a bit of late movement after the ball has passed the bat, shaping back towards the keeper. There's, there's encouragement there. It's still a, a, a pitch which doesn't have a great amount of demons. It's going to be the skill of the bowler and indeed the footmarks that could create yes. difficulties when the spin yes. comes on. And that's why I think while the ball is still new, the important wickets of Henry, because he will rely on the surface of the pitch more than someone like Bolt, who takes it out of play because of movement swing. Bolt swinging Ooh. into root. He brought his bat down in time, up to mid-off. Dot ball to end the session. England 18 for two at T here. So 67 behind, early damage done by New Zealand. They'll be well pleased with this short little period after New Zealand took a lead of 85, 356 for them. So uh, really a, a busy afternoon session, plenty happening. Seven wickets in all, 80 runs being added but it's uh, England who really have it all to do coming from behind Jeremy New Zealand delighted to have taken those two wickets yes I'm sure they are um, ideal for them and Matt Henry just continues his decent form with the ball uh, first of all running one across Rory Burns and deuced a drive he thought he was there and could get it but he found an outside edge and a, and a, and a decent cop it's second slip by Latham going to his right two-handed and so he departed I'd, without scoring so that's a bit of a come down for, for Rory Burns, who's been in terrific form. Um, and then Dom Sibley, uh, who's been working hard, trying to let the ball go, just squared up by Henry to a ball just outside the off stump, going back, squaring up and following it with his hands. And it went quite quickly through to, uh, to Daryl Mitchell at third slip, and he took it two-handed as well. At, and so two wickets, yes, both the openers gone. Uh, I think Crawley's looked, you know, he's played some nice little sort of shots, but then there's also a wee bit of doubt crept into his mind about the, the exact position of his off stump, playing at deliveries in that last over. So New Zealand will be a wee bit encouragement there for them. And then also Root, well, he's only just come in once and he's just looked to go with the swing and got a leading edge, but it was uh, it, along the ground, so it was perfectly safe. So a good start for New Zealand. Uh, and England, of course, will enjoy the fact that they've got a full session if they can get into this and put this deficit away if they can later today.